there is only first of all um let me check to make sure that my voice is being picked up before I continue operating on my cell phone. Let me listen. Just make sure. Okay, yes. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We are live. Voice is live. Okay. There is only one God. He is a black man. There's only one Jesus. Even the Christ of the Bible, the Bible Christ, teaches us that Jesus, the biblical Jesus, is a man of a, a woolly man. A man of um um pause. The color of bronze. There's, there's only one creator. One destroyer. As you see me, I'm draped down in my military uniform. There's only one alpha. Only one omega. Only one God. Yeah. Here's a black man. The biblical verse up in the Bible says that God created man up in his image. So, if we take a look at that, I am not a white. I am not a brown. I am not a yellow. I am not a pink. Okay? So, with that being said, we are about to get this live stream underway, right? Okay, well, Angel Snub Nut, he said, Soul Paul forever. You missed it, bro. Alquisha Alquan got roasted last night. Classic, he exposed himself as a liar. Well, God damn it. Hey, brother, Um, big bro, would you like to come on? Onto the stream. Hold up. Let me um figure out. I'm just gonna post it. Maybe you will not be able to come on. But wait a second. I'm trying to figure. I'm doing this for my cell phone. Okay. I f I figured it out. All right, I'm just gonna post this if you want to come on. Cause see now I'm back on my the. I mean, man, I got sidetracked. I got sidetracked from all the foolishness, man. You got these. Dudes, these supposed to be Marcus Garvey dudes who don't even give a a damn. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that they don't care, but the issue is the fact that they're now trying to redefine pro-blackness. And that right there makes me sick to my goddamn stomach, yo. See, the Thing is, you can infiltrate pro black, but not black supremacy. Now, black supremacy, and I got a bone to pick for Brother Tali Ibn Ra because I remember him saying that. Um, wait just a second, okay? Yeah, yeah, let me cut my camera off for just a second. Um, I remember Brother Talik Ibn Ra said that the Negro, the American Negro, wishes to
to be the same as the as pink folk. We want to be slave masters. But yes, yes, I, I humbly accept that title. Because, yes, I would love to see, I would do a reverse. I would have their people pick a cotton. I would lynch their people. That's why I gave myself the title of master. And then, of course, supremacy. Man, brother Talik, man, please come on, brother. Please come on, man. We about to go in, man, on these fake RBGs, man. These fake Pan-Africans. Ain't never gonna move to fucking Africa, but every five sec seconds got something to say about Africa, man. What the hell do these dudes know about Africa? They don't want to go to Africa. These dudes ain't never going to go to Africa. Going to be talking that same old um, sad story for the next... I mean, some of these dudes are almost 50, 60, 70 years old. Ain't been to Africa yet. Ain't repatriated yet. But still rocking a goddamn uh, Marcus Garvey flag, man. Come on, brother. Me and you agree on this. Yeah, I don't want to, but uh, <laughs> me and you agree on this, bro. These dudes are rocking these red, black, and green flags. That's why my flag um, is the Ethiopian flag. Because Pan-Africanism is just something that is just not feasible. The people on the continent do not want Pan-Africanism. Isn't it clear? They stick amongst and they hang amongst their own tribes. See, we represent the red, gold, and green. And the gold stands for the gold on the mother continent that we need to be fighting for. Oh, man, look at this. Oh, wow, I have a guest. Hold on, let me add him to the stream real quick. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are alive. Hey, how you doing there, Craig? Yeah, I'm doing fine, brother. Um, how are you? Well, you got something right. playing in the background loud as hell. Oh, hold on. Let me put it on mute. <laughs> I always watch these court shows early in the morning. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, Remind sir. me of the... Man, are you, are you okay. there? No? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, go ahead. Do your thing. Well, no. Well, not nah, to be honest with you, brother. Um, yeah, there was something that I was going to do. Um, I'm just talking about... Um, ah, man, I, I keep forgetting the damn topic, but the fact, well, okay. All right. Where are we at now? Bro, brother, what do you think, man, these RBG dudes, these pan African dudes, these pro black dudes? I, I mean, these dudes who, for the last 40 or 50 years, been talking about they going <laughs> to repatriate to Africa. When the hell are you going, man? <laughs> you know? <laughs> They're not going back to Africa. They're going to be in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And <laughs> would never go to Africa but because they scared. I mean, God, man, damn, bro. You talking I about wanna... leaving, leaving the comforts of your home and going to a foreign place, and you really don't know how that's going to turn out. You really don't know. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's up in the air. And you want to pack up, and because you have this delusion this fantasy in your mind because there's no help in africa you know once you get to africa there's no ebt cards there's no social security there you know you know you got most of these people that actually go to africa they got their economics in check nobody goes to africa broke most of these people that go they got money you know jay-z and beyonce go because they got money uh, most of these people go because they got money and and a lot of them even establish friendships with some of these people before they actually go. They have a, a working relationship or something with some of these people. They just don't pack up their family and go. It's been done, but again, 
like I said, a lot of brothers and sisters, they have money. They're not going over there broke. And I mean, these these RBG dudes, man, these Pan African dudes that oh, they they so they love Marcus Garvey. When I heard Marcus Garvey um had boats that weren't worth weren't worth a goddamn. I mean, man, come were. on, man. Oh man, I mean, speak on that just real quick, brother. Yeah, but unfortunately, that's that's the reality of it. That uh, they invested in these boats, and they had all the brothers and sisters in the UNIA. They bought stock into these boats, but they never seen the actual boats. They saw a pretty picture, you know, on a, on a pamphlet. They didn't see the actual boat. The actual boats, uh, the first, to my knowledge, was two. And they, there was some broke down, raggedy boats that, that wasn't even seaworthy, actually. And they never made a profit. They never made a profit. I don't even know if they made any trips. They never made no profit. And towards the end, look, yes, sir. And, and, and towards the end, this man actually bought a, a third boat. The same quality. You know, same quality boat. They just, you know... Hey, brother, what would you say to those who? No, no, I'll be the cut, cut your wisdom, brother, man. Man, yeah. you're a wise man. Wise owl, bro. That's what we need up in the community, a wise owl. But what I'm saying, okay, well, no, the, que the next question is, like, why do these dudes act like Marcus Garvey is their god? Like Marcus <laughs> Garvey is there Jesus. I'm talking yeah. about you can't say don't say nothing bad about Marcus Garvey, bro. You feel me? Okay, look, yeah. look. Like you know, I've been around a long time, right? Okay. My first experience with Pan Africans or the Pan African mindset, it was hell, even the people, a lot of people in the nation of Islam was Pan African. Pat African simply meant, like we talked about on, on our last video that we did together, it was simply trying to get the brothers and sisters on the continent together. That's all. That's all it was. Matter of fact, on the Muhammad Speaks, you had two brothers reaching out to each other across the globe. That, was, that represented the Muhammad Speaks because Elijah Muhammad even taught about us reaching out to the brothers and sisters in Africa, you know, on the other side of the world. We should be reaching out to each other. Of course, we did more reaching than they ever done. I don't and that's that's what pisses me off. Okay. I don't mind uh being your brother or whatever, but it should be uh what's the word I'm looking for? But anyway, I can't think of the word for nothing in my life, but the same way I reach out to you for to be a brother, you should be doing that to me. Here we are, the, the African Americans, and we are the ones, Africa, 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 reaching out to, to the continent. Ain't nobody over there doing that with us. And I, I don't like that. The hell with you. I don't I don't need you like that. Hell, even my, I, I look, look, brother Craig, I have biological relatives. I've sent them emails, I sent them uh physical letters. And they act like they can't write to me or, or, or can't even make a telephone call, send a text. The hell with them. These are my biological. I know these are my Most of them I was raised with. I know these are my biological cousins and, and, and people that I'm related to. They don't want to associate with me. The hell with them. So what make you think I'm going to be excited about reaching out to some African people I don't even know? The hell with them. I'm going to stick with the, with the trying to Try to uh, make establish something with the so-called nigger in America, and quite frankly, the hell with them too. If you want to stay a slave, okay, I'm sorry, but go ahead. Bro. Yeah, if you want to stay oh, a slave, ahead, question. Yeah, if you want to stay a slave, if you want to stay in this condition that you're in, that's fine with me too. I'm not going to go around begging people for their love. What's wrong with us? We run around here. You see some somebody, you know, uh, like so, some woman we chasing. You see that woman is don't have no interest in you. Why you keep chasing her like that? You know, she even making fun of how what you look like and and trying to put you down and, and whatever. I I love her. The hell with her. She can kick rock. Even my even my Terry Ellis, I talk about all the time. If I found out that she had some kind of nasty, funny attitude, that she can kick rocks. I don't give a damn about you like that. 
So you know, different, you know, you know, the, the, hey. you can roll out. Hey, brother Talik, man. Um, yeah. All right, man. We've already established, man. Both of us that we come from some tribe yeah. on the continent. I mean, and see, but but those ancient people, though. That's that's why I always what you said, man. Like we always trying to, we 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 want to live like ancient people live. No, the, the, those were way back uh, two and three thousand years ago. Mm-hmm. Like, what are we doing today? Like, so, but, all right, man, um, I'm just wondering at this point, like, um, like, what's your thoughts on these dudes to, that would say, I mean, these RBG dudes and these Pan-African dudes that would say, you're, you're, you're speaking blasphemous. I mean, and, <laughs> you know, Pan-Africanism is their Bible. Marcus Garvey is their Jesus Christ, their savior figure. And they would yeah. say that you're speaking blasphemous because you're telling the truth. I've had mm-hmm. dude tell me that just because, man, remember when I did my Dark Side of Africa videos? Yeah. And told the truth about Africa. I had dudes um, hit me up talking about, oh, man, I ain't feeling that video because they <laughs> don't want the truth. Yo, there's certain places, but none of them have ever packed up and repatriated back. Mm-hmm. Since they claim they claim that's what it's about, they sit over here in America and talk that shit. But they're not gonna mm-hmm. go over to Africa. I mean, man, come on, bro. Like this stuff got to be torn down, man. We gotta. I mean that 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 mindset, man. I mean, but I understand like the feel good rhetoric. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro, the feel good, the pretty speeches and You're right. Pretty performances, and you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like, <laughs> everybody wants to. I mean, especially you know, like um, these um, pro black guys. But yeah, man, um, tell me something about Alquan. You you just you told me something. Alquan got oh, checked man. last night. Man, it, it was so. I I feel sorry for the the brother myself. He 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 seriously messed up. Look. I don't know if you're familiar with with Sister Nandy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, he came on Sister Nandy channel. Matter of fact, she was one of the people that uh, Sister Noble recruited. To, you know, to try everybody gunning for me. You know, they want to bring Angel Snuffin up down, and you know they did tear down my channel. Sonetta did. He got in the par. They false flagged my channel. It don't make any difference, Craig. I'm still cool. I'm still strong. I'm still. The mighty one still doing my thizzy. <laughs> he ain't stopped nothing. <laughs> but uh, I know that makes a lot of folks upset. And Soul Liberation Day still got the same kind of view it always got. It didn't. It didn't stop nothing. You know. It's still, matter of fact, Soul Liberation Day speech. I don't know what it is, but uh, out of all all my videos, people seem like they just at least want to hear the Soul Liberation Day uh, address. So I heard a mega Courtney. Was on Soul Liberation Day. Well, she, she was so upset. She said, "Brother, you didn't invite me to Soul Liberation Day." I'm like, "Sister, we was going through." <laughs> yeah, that's what, sister, well, that's what sister. We was about, going through through the purge. We was getting rid of a lot, a lot of folks and going yeah, through all about, that kind of um, stuff. Brother, brother Maurice Muhammad. Was he? Well, what's been going on with him? I ain't been hearing nothing from him lately. I didn't well, see he, him on Soul Liberation. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's getting, uh, he's, uh, he's gonna be on the scene. He's getting well. He's getting, he, he was fighting COVID. Oh, wow, man. Sorry to and, hear that. And, and, and it, it was, you know, whooping him up. Oh, man. But he's almost well. Now he told last message that I got from him. He said, bro, I'm almost, I'm ready to get back to the game. <laughs> That's what I always say, bro. Oh, man, we're African people, man. Just like, okay, we fighting COVID and, 2021 leading to 2022, man. Look at the people mm-hmm. on the continent, man, fighting malaria. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, yo. Yeah. And that shit, that is a killer, a blind it killer. It is, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's rough. It's rough. Yeah. It's rough stuff, man. Oh my god. But you, but yes, your sir. boy Aquan, he screwed up big time last night because. Okay, he want he as you know he always mess with me all the time. That's his thing. He been messing with me for years. You know, he want to he want to uh, degrade the Mississippi campaign. Anything that I say, anything that I do, he wants to tear it down. And, and, and he wants he wants to do it in the public, show how smart he is over me. Right. OK, so he thought he had his chance last night, which he did. 
Nandy gave him his chance, and uh, I spoke my little piece, and he in a hurry. He, he really exposed me. He really didn't. But I wouldn't let him do it. I kept interrupting him. He said, I let you, I let you talk. I don't give a damn what you let me do. I hate your, you know, I went off on him. I hate your faceless ass. I don't have no respect for you, piece of trash. I went off on him. And uh, finally yeah, gave him a chance to speak. Huh, okay. I made you a, yeah. Okay. And finally, we gave him a, a, a chance to speak. And I was quiet. But the first thing that came out of his mouth, he said, that I invited him to Soul Liberation Day. I don't know which one it was, uh, 2018, 2017. Well, it had to be 18 or 19. So and he said, I paid him to speak. I don't pay nobody to speak. There's only one person that I would pay to speak, and I can't afford it. That's Minister Farrakhan. That's because I want to get him in person to blast his ass. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hey. That's the only one, that's the only person I would want I would pay to speak so I can get his ass. You know, I put him on a spot. But uh Alquan talk about I paid him fifty dollars to speak at Lib Civil Low Soul Liberation. No, I I gave you fifty bucks. I don't know if you remember, Brother Craig. At the uh, kindness of your heart, though. At the uh, kindness yeah. of your heart. Because you you have always been one who has, um, I mean, man, you put your money where your mouth is. You yeah. put your, you've donated to the people, man. You've helped the people. Yeah. You you've you've done great deeds for black people. But see, these other dudes, like you said, man, they was jealous of yeah. what you had donated and done for me. They was jealous, man. They didn't want to see. Were. Man, us build a strong union, a strong bond, and yeah, this radio station man going. They didn't want to see that. No, that's why they put so many um, you know, so many hurdles up in the way, man. And then Doctor Umar Johnson, oh my God, that dude. <laughs> oh, he's a, oh uh, man, he's a charlatan. Man, I don't even. I, I still love his message, though. But man, even yeah, Doctor, that's not to say people get that messed up. Just because um, he's a little on the foul side doesn't mean that he doesn't speak a lot of different truths. Because he does, yes, Minister Farrakhan. I, I look, I listen to Minister Farrakhan. Well, not 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 lately because he's sick and he might be on his deathbed right now. But who knows? But I listen to Minister Farrakhan. That's not the point. The point is. These people do some foul stuff. It's just simple as that. You know, they, they do some foul. They do good things, but they also are foul. But the people that follow them don't want to hear the foul part. Only thing they want to hear is the praise part. Like Marcus Garvey was a good person, and he probably did to the best of his ability, but at the same time, there was a lot of foul stuff going on, a lot of incompetent stuff. Now, I can't say whether or not that a lot of this stuff was done on purpose. Some of this stuff was done because people just incompetent. They really don't know what they're doing. They're just trying. Man, you ever heard of Leonard P. Howell? Leonard P. Who? Howell. Leonard P. Howell. You he know, was, it seemed like I, I seemed like I heard the name, but I'm not really familiar. Yeah. Yeah, he was in Jamaica and stuff, man. You know, them brothers at that time, man, was going through. Whoo! Man, mm -hmm. this is why my, my flag or whatever, man, those brothers in Jamaica, but we, we can't I mean, they weren't going through nothing worse. They had to go hide off into the hills. They were going through nothing worse than our ancestors, Kuta Kente. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. What, do you believe Kuta Kente was a real person or no? Or, he, or let, his, let, his let, character let, was just bait. Go ahead, brother. Let me get back. Let me let me tell get 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 this uh, Alquan crap out the way. Then we can get back to Kuta Kente. Uh, basically, to make a long story short. Alquan claimed on Nandy's show that I paid him to speak at Soul Liberation Day. And I wouldn't let him go no further. I said, you're a damn lie. He said, yes, you did. I said, that 50 bucks that I gave you was for a raffle. Matter of fact, I was I had I had gave away six thousand dollars that year. I gave a thousand to my audience, you know, the people in the raffle. 
And I spent the other $5,000, gave some to my relative, gave some to strangers, you know, just handed it out, that the $6,000. I worked for that just to give it away. I got on the truck and I just worked for a few weeks to raise that money. I said, I want to give away six grand. And that's what I did. You know, because Brother Craig, look, I'm single. I don't have no children. I'm making good How's money. How's that truck work? How's that truck work, though? I mean, is it hard work? That truck uh, working on that truck? Yes and no. Yes and no. Because I can have good days or good weeks where I feel like, damn, I'm getting free money. I mean, that's just how easy the work is. But then, you, oh, Brother Greg, you can have those days like you wish you was dead, like everything go wrong. <laughs> you know, it's just messed up. Especially when you're talking about driving in bad weather. Because I was thinking about trying to probably going back on the road, but I'm not going to go back on the road in bad weather. You know, it's wintertime, you know, snow and ice getting ready to come. I'm not doing that. <clears throat> but to make a long story short, again, <clears throat> this was the accusation. And he said, let me talk, let me talk. I said, I'm not going to let you talk. You're going to prove your lie first. Show us the email. Show us the proof that I gave you $50 for speaking. And Sister Nandy wouldn't let him go no further either. She said, man, just show us the, the proof. Show us the email. Because, you know, it's a possibility that I did invite him to Soul Liberation Day. But I didn't pay you a damn dime. It's for a raffle. Okay. And you know, God Nollywood Jr. made a, a video about that. And I and I got that on my channel. On one of my uh, channels. Yeah, that's that would be my next question. Um, what's your issue? I mean, can the beef ever be squashed? Um well, you know, yeah, like, it, it, I it, agree it, with you. But let it me just can't, get it all out. You know, I would say that it's a, it's, it's a possibility. I can say that. Yeah. Let me just get it all out. I'm just saying that, you know, we as African people, including you, we, we, we've we always been a tribal people. And mm -hmm. your tribe, and I don't even know where the hell you come from because, you know what I'm saying, you ain't never um took a DNA test to show what um, country on the motherland. But you don't believe in DNA. But I'm just saying, though. You look just it's not like that I don't believe in, in DNA. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's not, it's not that I don't believe in, in, in DNA. This, this is your problem. <clears throat> DNA technology has arisen to the point where it can tell you the things that these people are claiming. It, it doesn't. It ha the best thing that DNA can tell you is what is happening in modern times. It cannot go back hundreds and thousands of years. It, the technology has not reached to that point. But even so, the technology that, that they do have, it would tell you in a lot of these tests, you're not no full-blooded nothing. You're a little bit of this and you're a little bit of that. And, and another thing that the, these Pan-Africans don't like talking about is the fact all those people on that continent are not the same. You can oh, take sure. a picture. You can take a picture of somebody from Somali and somebody from the Congo those people do not look the same at all, period. You could tell, but they both from Africa. They do not look the same. I used to work with brother and sisters from the Congo and, and Somali. They do not look nothing the same, period. You could tell the difference between the two, and they both Africans, pure. Yes, well, I don't know how pure. There's but no see, such this thing. thing. As, as well, this is the thing about purity yeah, is this here. Okay. As long as you, like Seth Francis, I use German Shepherds for an example. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is how they try to keep up with the purity of German Shepherds. You got to have papers to show that the, the, the male and the female come from Germ the German Shepherd lineage. They are German Shepherds. There's no mixing. But a German no Shepherd is a mixed breed. It, it, they mixed up a wolf dog. He got a little bit of wolf dog in him and a little bit of other dog. A German Shepherd right. is, I mean, yeah, but they He's call a him a, a pure. Yeah, he's a hybrid already, just like a, yeah, he's a hybrid already. See, that's what I'm trying to. That's what I'm saying with the so-called Negro in America. We are a hybrid. We are made up of these other people, but we come. We just like the German Shepherd. We become our own breed. See what I'm saying? You could say that. You could say that we're Africans 
we're African, we're African hybrid. But you can't even really say that because in America, there was already dark skinned people here. And common sense tell you which is cheaper. If you're in, in, in business, it's, don't you think that it's cheaper to use the people that's here already or you're going to go through all the trouble and expense of grabbing people from overseas and bringing here? Which which one is cheaper? It's yeah, cheaper. So, yeah, just use the people here. What do you, you think about what did. Chief X said? What Chief X said, man, that we are tropical Africans, bro. I, mean, I no, watched no. that video that we 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 were tropical, we're tropical people. And he, he talked about um, when he went to Africa, he stepped on the soil and he could feel the ancestors on his. No, sir, only thing you felt on the, your feet was some damn dirt. You ain't felt no damn ancestors. People are dead. Ain't nobody gonna feel you. You know, I, I hate. I'm so sick of all this old, uh, you know, stuff like that. Pretend imagination stuff. And I I made about four or five videos and made sure that I put his name in the video. I want to challenge you on your tropical African stuff. You, that's bull crap. That's bull crap. How the hell did these tropical Ar uh, Africans even get over here to begin with? And even if a few did get over here, it's not to the point where they even affected the Negro population. They they were They were not the original breeding stock. The original breeding stock, look, Good the man. original breeding stock, common sense tells me, the original breeding stock had to be people that was already here. And then later on, I mean, because it's documented. Yes, sir. Then they began, yes, they sir. brought uh, people from the islands and they brought people from Africa and blah, blah, blah. That's documented. I can't argue with that. <laughs> but the original breeding stock was these natives that was already here. Also, this had this was going on for 300 years. During that period of time, these pecker was to rape the hell out of us too. You know, we not know we all messed up. But then on top of that, bro. Okay, let me say two things real quick. First thing I'm gonna say, Chief X is a is a mixed breed. Yeah, he don't. Okay, oh, hold up, brother. Let me get it all up. First, the, I I got two things to say. First of all, Chief X is a Chief X don't look like no African. Chief X looks like a no. mixed breed. You yeah. look. More purebred than him, he look. He's a mixed breed, and the Africans uh, tell me that. Yes, sir. Right. So, Chief the, the people is on the continent that I've been around call me African brother almost immediately. They don't never. They said, "What I either either I'm from the islands or I'm from Africa." They, you know, that's what they when when I meet those people, that's what they they think. They think I'm yeah, one of them. Yeah, all you gotta have is the accent. If you had the accent, that's all I gotta do. Yeah. Just do the yeah. accent, and they, I'll be accepted. Give me, give me the African woman real quick. Yeah, yeah. So you know, Chief X, man. You know, what I'm saying, man, he's he's definitely a mixed breed. He's yeah, not he's a purebred point. nothing. No. He's a like you say, man. He's a a Negro born. You know, and man, I don't know, man. Okay, the second thing that I will say on air, and. I almost forgot about this, but yeah, um, you know, I did my lineage and, you know, it showed that, you know, I have an, a purebred Nigerian woman mm -hmm. who was raped, raped by a British men. You know what I'm saying? In the 1800s, mm -hmm. was raped by the British, by the British and all that type of shit. That's why I'm so fucking fair skinned. Mm -hmm. Because a, that's why, man. Bro, every time I hear something about a black woman willingly laying down with the doggone white man, man, that that just it, it, that disrupts my soul because I know I come from a lineage of women who are raped by white men mm -hmm. during slavery. That's why, man, that that stuff, man. Oh my God, that does something to me, man. I'm gonna pass the mic over to you, bro. Big bro. Yeah, we're gonna go back. We never finished our Alquan story. <laughs> Let me finish this Alquan story so we can go somewhere else. Uh, what Alquan done? He went to find that. I already told these, you know, the audience that the money that I get Alquan was for a raffle, and he's claiming I'm telling a lie. It was to pay him. I'm going to give him money to, to speak. Okay. So he looked up. Now, he looked up. I already had the video. I found the video link to, to what uh, 
Guy Nollywood Jr. had done. But he screen shared his email, and the first thing that popped up was congratulations, you won a raffle. <laughs> You know, Sister Daddy started going off, get your ass off my damn channel, get your life. You know, people was like, you know, he. these people tell so many lies. I believe they actually believe the lie. They done told it for, for so long. They actually believe the lie that they, that they tell. And he got all caught up. It was really embarrassing. It was really pathetic. But it looked good for us because I was telling the truth. There's no reason for me to, uh, to tell a lie. But going back to the Kutakente thing, now if you notice, now Kutakente, they say that that's a fictional story. Okay, cool. But it's still based on real life events. <clears throat> okay, so Kutakente had um, a baby with the Negro. Now, if you notice, they never call Kutakente a Negro, they call him an uh, uh, African you know, associated with the continent. They never referred to Kutakente as a Negro. They referred the others that was already here, they referred to them as Negroes or nigger. And then, they, of course, they did call uh, Kuta a nigger after they start breaking them down or whatever, but he was, a, he was a wild African. And then he had a baby, Kizzy, with a Negro. And to my knowledge, you may be familiar with the story too, but I don't remember Kuta Kente calling Kizzy an African. He taught he taught her his side of the family, but he didn't remember say they you whooped, are African. They whooped Kizzy, man, from the movie. I don't know if um the movie on Roots is correct. I'm talking about just the Kuta Kente scene. They yeah. whooped. Man, Kuta Kente, oh my God, man. I feel sorry for the brother. They yeah. whooped that brother. Every time I see that scene, the remake and the original. Yeah. Man, every time I see that scene, man, that brings tears. It brings so much hatred. I yeah. mean, I, to, to, to see how they did our people, man. Yeah. That, that brings hatred. So I don't, I don't know, man. But what I'm saying, the man that's whipped like that, like they whipped Kunta Kinte, man. What the hell? Man, he, he had been broken. He had been book broke, broken. Mm -hmm. It broke him down. I mean, I mean he, what is America not, I mean, supposed either, to do? I mean, Kuta Kente didn't have too much of a choice. Either he was going to live or he was going to die. You know, and the only way he's going to live, he had to submit. Because otherwise they would have just killed him. You know, they, you know, no big deal. They just would have killed him. And he decided, you know, look, nobody, nobody is is uh, immune to pain and suffering. It, it takes a strong heart to say, look, I'm just going to die. I'm going to let these people just whoop me until I die. Yeah, not that because, type of pain, bro. With that horse yeah, whip, bro. I mean, what yeah. they was doing to our people up on yeah. the, uh, slavery, what they did to Kuta Kente, man, whooped them with a goddamn horse whip, man. That's the, and that I thing mean, cuts in, that thing cuts into your flesh. Ah, shit, man. It's like getting cut with a knife. So now, with that being said, bro, the, the, the last question that I really have for you, because, bro, trust and believe, I've been following you for years. I know all about the stuff that you say. But since I call myself Master Supremacy, and I've heard you say that black folk, all we want to do is just be a, um, want to be like the white man. We want to be the, um, what do you call it? Okay, um, to enslave white people. Because I'm going to tell you this, bro. Why, the reason I call myself master supremacy mm -hmm. is because, yes, I would enslave white folks, white people. I would have white people pick and cotton. I would uh, lynch white people. So, yes, I, I want to do to those as what they have done to my people. Yes. That was another thing I wanted to bring up. Because I remember you used to always talk about that. You used to always have an issue with people that talk about supremacy. Man, we want to do unto those what they have done unto us. Yes, I would have white folks um, picking tomatoes, picking um, cotton as a slave. I would be the overseers. I, mm -hmm. would have, I would lynch white people. Yes, I would. I would do to them is what they done it to us, man. Look at what they did to Brother Maker Evers. 
Look at mm -hmm. what they did to brother Martin Luther King Jr. Shot Martin Luther King Jr. dead. Well, actually, oh, shot. Huh? well, actually, yes, sir. actually, technically, it's not a we. It was a it was a certain group of individuals and persons. Because if it was we, it would be the United States government, and the people would be supporting the United States government. And really, see, this is what gets me. If the white man is so evil and wicked as they claim, then why didn't he just exterminate all the all the slaves? Wouldn't even be have to deal with this problem with us at all. As soon as they decided, no more slavery. Mm -hmm. Either we kill them or send them to Africa or wherever. I don't give a damn. Just get them. They just got to get the hell out of here. Why it's didn't capitalism. Why didn't they do that? Because it's why capitalism. didn't they? Well, I'm well, answering yeah, your but, question, bro. But see, no. to me, keep you answer. here, see, for yeah. me, for me, it's going to be a problem, and it is. It's it's a problem. It's going to be an ongoing problem. Let's nip it in the bud. We kill every last one that we find. We send them to Africa or back to Jamaica. This, this this system wouldn't the work. This system wouldn't work like that, though, bro. Capitalism, white American capitalism. There has to be, there has to. Okay, like Brother Malcolm talked. There has to be an oppressed for there to be an oppressor. They was bringing they in the, uh, they was bringing in. They brought for in to be a master. They don't need. They, they don't need you no more. They was bringing in immigrants from Europe, and they was coming by the boatloads every day. They don't need. Oh, they so, don't need no. They don't need you. But would you agree with this? There has to be a um, a slave to be a master for there. OK, there has to be a slave for there to be a master. There has to be an oppressed for there to be an oppressor. Come on, bro. That's that, the that's just all fall is, apart if they killed the us all. The problem is. They don't need you. They got immigrants like right now. They got people from all over the world coming here every day. They don't need you. They didn't need. They didn't even need you then. They, you was re, you was replaced by those immigrants coming from Europe by the boatloads every day. They don't need you. They well, don't I need you. As a, I know me as an individual. They don't need me as an individual. No, I'm sorry. They don't need us as a people. They don't need. They don't need us. They don't need so, you. Oh, so if they don't need us, they got all the tools. To dispose of us, but they, they can do that. No. They could do that right now, today. Why don't they do it? That's my that's my thing. If they such devil and want to kill you like that, look, see, this is what you have to understand. They want you to be underneath their their leg. That's what let underneath me, let their me, wings. Let me explain something. Yes, slavery was about economics. It was not about. They use the racial thing, skin color, to justify. They use religion to justify. They use science to justify, but slavery was about money. It wasn't about, I hate you, just like a cow. Oh, I hate cows. Cows make me sick. No, cows is, is about money. It's about making milk, selling beef. That's what raising cows is about. It ain't about hating the cow. Slavery was about economics. They use the hate thing, the dislike thing, the race thing to help justify and get the people on board to support it. That's what it was about. It's about money. Because it's the ones like who make it, because look, the ones who was making the money wasn't talking all that crazy stuff. They was counting their green dollars. They weren't involved yeah. in all that stuff. But they just like what Dr. Umar Johnson says, man, look at how much money we spend on Christmas. Look at how much money black people spend on Christmas, spend on Thanksgiving. The uh, American economy would collapse if they eliminated all black people. Look, see, there's a hmm. this country was doing just, Christmas, Thanksgiving wasn't always celebrated. They they was they just started celebrating Christmas and Thanksgiving in the late 1800s. What our black people would Walmart collapse? Would the, and, and guess the what? Stock. They were celebrating. Yes, they were celebrating Christmas and Thanksgiving, and Negroes was was slaves. So what? What? Were, how was you? You know, how, there was no economics. You you weren't involved in the economics of, of, of Christmas and, and whatever. These, look, see, this is another thing you have to understand. These blackity black type folks, whatever, they they spend their own narratives and they sell. And it, it's not always everything that they sell is not always true. Like the transatlantic slave trade. I'm not saying that the, that the 
a transatlantic slave trade never happened because it's documented. I know. But on the level that they talking about. No, they show the same old papers all the time. No new papers, no new document. This is one thing you can just guarantee about white people. White people document. They put their stuff down on paper. Yes, sir. And we should see more than the paperwork that we see all the time. If the transatlantic slave trade, they had all these slaves coming back and forth from Africa to America on that large scale. It should be endless paperwork. But you don't see that. Also, yeah, I agree with you. Oh, no, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, but also, also, do you know how many boats that it would take in order to pull this off every yeah, day? I was going back and forth. I was going to throw this out here, too. Yep, yep. Yeah. That's exactly where I'm going. Remember what Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad said? Um, 200 million died in the Middle Passage alone. Like, damn, thought, those are some high numbers. Well, go I thought ahead, it was bro. 100. <laughs> no, I thought, well, I thought it was 100. 100. Oh, okay, 100. Okay, well, let's go there. 100 okay. million up in the transatlantic slave trade died in the yeah. Middle Passage alone. Uh, wasn't it a... How many boats would that take? <laughs> right. I mean, a million? <laughs> I mean, I don't know, bro. The best you can That's do on a boat, the maximum, I think, is a, is 100 people on a boat. That's the maximum each trip that they could do. And remember, most of these people, according to the story, remember, most of them not even going to make it. So by the yeah, time they make it to America, maybe only 40 or something, you know, maybe only 40%. Survive. But no, not these. No, okay. Well, you're talking about the boat that they had, the technology that they had during the time period. Because yeah. they claim um, that they packed this like sardines. I mean, like it was, you know, and then like Craig, you say, yes, yeah, sir. Go ahead. We can do a simple experiment on that. Get your family, I don't know how many it is of you, and, and cram yourself into the bathroom, just the bathroom. And see how long you and your family can stay in that bathroom all cramped up. And you and actually you will be more comfortable in your bathroom than the people on the boat. Because remember, they all chained up next to each other, according to the story. They yeah. chained up. Defecating. Right. Defecating, cool. urinating. We, um, sisters um, having miscarriages, periods. Right. Yeah. Mean, whoa. That story Still. is crazy. And and and. You know, they don't even pack animals that way, you know, all chained up or whatever. And look, that boat bouncing around like that on those heavy seas, if you chain those, that, that shaking and back and forth will break people's limbs off because you have nowhere to go. And that boat throwing you, you're not, you're not secure. In order for, for them to make a safe trip, they have to actually secure those people down. And the way they were shackled to the boat, when that boat is rocking back and forth, it'll break people's limbs off. So, so we've been here before Columbus. Bro, I, I want to make sure, man, that you upload this video, man, to your channel because you got more I viewership am. than me. But I yeah, am. so we've been here before Columbus, what you would say. I mean, what well, I'm saying, black. I mean, it, it just, I mean, it just to me, it's about using your common sense. Common sense tell us. Uh, and if you're a historian, you know, and to I, I've, I've seen some of the early pictures or paintings from the early explorers that came here. Those people, those natives, just as dark and even had the same type of customs or whatever, just like Africans. Matter of fact, they did yeah. call them African. They called the native people here at one time or another. They called them Indians. They called them Africans. They also called them black. They called them Negro. The natives yes. that was here. Yeah, Christopher Columbus even said that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Um, wow, this story is crazy. Okay, but with all that being said, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out, like, the I mean, man, do we have an origin? I mean, like the best to I, I know us, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? To the best of our ability, man. I mean, well, the like man, I want to take saying... it back to that. Okay, yeah, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. I'm saying that we should just accept who we are. We are not the original stock. We're not the original stock. We are the consequences of 
hundreds of years of 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 inbreeding. Remember, look, <sighs> whew, Craig. Mm -mm -mm. But I mean, man, millions of years. Look, I mean, hundreds of years of inbreeding. Right. No, but, look, look I at mean, this. Yeah, yes, sir. Look at this. Okay, first of all, the people on the continent of Africa. We already talked about it. They are not, they they're not the same. They're different people. They don't look the same. They have it's over uh, seven hundred different tribes. There's fifty two nations. Those people, all kinds of languages on the continent. They're not the same. Okay, we already established that. Yep. It's the same thing when it comes to the the natives that was here. They're not the same either. All those people that was here, they're not the same either. So what happened during slavery? is these people, because of slavery, they was all rounded up or whatever, they was forced to interbreed with each, with, with each, with each other who they never messed with. But because of slavery, they was forced to interbreed. So the first intermixing was simply the native mixing with themselves that was here already. Then, of course, you know, that cracker, he was raping them early in the game. <laughs> it was They've been raping let's, us for, let's for go who way knows way how past. long. We're, we're okay. early in that when, when then, were we just, okay, go ahead, bro. And then later on, they did import other dark-skinned people here, and they mixed with the natives that was here. The white man was raping all of us, and after a certain period of time, produced what we call the Negro. Yes, sir. How and when were we created as a people? I mean, well, okay, I don't know now, exactly. Now, Okay, I don't I know mean, exactly when you have any idea, point, any guess. I, I, I really don't. I ain't talking about. I'm not talking about slavery. I'm not talking about Africa. I'm talking about way. I'm talking about a million years ago, bro. Now we gonna get off. Oh, the I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't know. I I don't even know and don't really care to even go you back there. You don't even care how you were. Um, how, how did no. Your lineage. Do you know how long, how far your lineage goes back? You don't it even mean, care. I don't even care because, <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, as long as you are dominated, as long as you are oppressed, as long as you are under the foot of another man, it it really means nothing. That's only been for okay, brother. But listen, that's only been for what the last five hundred, six hundred years. Um, about the white man in the last like two, three thousand years by the air. But I'm talking about uh, uh, two, three hundred thousand years ago. It really, you, don't think, it really, you don't think it don't matter. It, you don't care. You don't want to know where you come from. I'm talking about for me. That's how, not my yeah, priority. To, for me, that's not my priority. That's the priority of scientists and educated people, genealogists, people who are involved in that. That, that you know that doesn't mean to, for me. That's not my top priority. It would be nice to know, but that's not my top priority. I don't care nothing about that stuff. It don't don't mean nothing to me. I want to get out of jail. I want to get out of this jail once and for all. That's the top priority. And that's okay, another so, thing. That's another thing that we that that we get caught up in other stuff, but we haven't accomplished the real goal. The real goal need to be: I'm in jail. How do I get out? I need to get out of jail. Well, okay. Because it don't mean nothing with, yeah. if you're not free. You, you're not yeah. living your own life. But the question becomes now, since we on that, okay, um, would you say, yes or no, that you are, you are living a better life in America than you would be back in the, um, um, back on the continent? I mean, okay, well, is the African Americanus living mm -hmm. a better life here? Um, underneath, you know, they got free health care, um, welfare. Like, do you think in certain places in Ethiopia, man, you see, there are villages up on the continent that don't even have running water. No, nope. don't have. They don't have running water. Um, what I'm saying, I'm not trying to uh, make mockery or nothing of the continent. I'm just saying, you seen those, um, um commercials just donate a dollar or something right. to an Ethiopian baby. So what I'm saying is, do you think that black folks, what we classify today as black folks, they're doing better here up, in, up underneath the American white man, or would they be doing better off in Africa? For the most part, that's what I'm asking. Well, at this moment in time, I mean, common sense tell you that we're better off 
and doing better here in, in America because those people just don't, they don't have it going on like we do. Matter of fact, they, they, they are willing to risk their lives to come here. So, I mean, if, if you could if you could use an EBT EBT card in Africa, maybe a lot of these folks would get up and go if they could have the same the same comfort. See, that's the thing about it. Even the Negroes that do go to Africa, they still going to places that basically have the same type of lifestyle in Africa that they live in in America. They're not going there and living under traditional African customs. They want to drive cars. They don't want to eat no damn antelope, <laughs> you know, all that strange food. They want to go to a part of Africa where basically those Africans are trying to live European only lifestyle. The good parts. Yeah, only yeah. the good parts. That's good why I part. point that out. In the dark side of Africa, yeah, only mm -hmm. the good parts. You never hear none of these um Pan-African scholars or these Pan-African teachers. They, you, they don't go up into the... Um, Places in Africa that are at war. This yes. still slavery still exists. Sure over do. Africa. That's right. Hell yeah. Um, they never go to those type of places. You know what I'm saying? And no, nope. I mean man, it's just a shame. That's why. Yeah, yeah, like man. That's such for, go ahead. That's such for you, Huro guy. You never see him go where in Africa where they having some kind of real problem or where or where the 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 the, the uh, People are actually trying to practice traditional lifestyle. He don't go to those places. He go to the places where he can get some African fast food on the street, you know, and all that stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, tourist. You know? He goes yeah, to Africa as a tourist with a yeah, round a trip ticket. With a yeah, round with trip round ticket. Ticket, right. Yeah. And he comes back over here and, you know, benefits from American white Pink American, whatever we're going to call it. Pink American <laughs> right. luxuries. Pink American luxuries. He mm -hmm. goes up to Africa and um, he, he goes and shows the foods that he eats and all that type of stuff, but then comes back over here up into his nest mm -hmm. of America. You know what I'm saying? Because, see, they would treat you different on the continent. I know this for a fact. See, once you're, um, see, as a tourist, they're going to treat you better. Because, you know, you, you know, a lot of those brothers over there, man, they're doing what they got to do. Like, I, I'm not even going to hate on them for like trying to scare. But yeah, um, the thing is that they want your American dollar. They want search for a hurus. They want his American dollar. So, yeah, they'll treat him nice. But the moment he moves over there completely, uh, man, it's going to wear off real soon. Trust me. And then the, he going to really get the brunt of what it is to really be an African. They never go like even Dr. Umar Johnson, any of these um, guys, they don't go over there to where there's conflict in Ethiopia no. at the um, um, Tigray um, region. They don't go to over there up in the um, borders of um, Cameroon and um, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. They don't go over. They don't go. Man. These dudes be trying to make up excuses of what goes on as far as like with the um, what do they call that? The um, oh my God, um, what's the word that I'm thinking of? You know, you know when they call you foreigners. Okay, well let me just say this: what do they call? It? There's a term for that to where, oh my God, it's um, to where, oh my God. But all right, the thing is, man, like I've spoken and I've seen and I've watched a whole lot of um. Um, native Africans and man, they will call not only would they call they will call a, a Cameroon a Cameroonian will, uh -huh. will look at a Nigerian somebody that's right next door as being a foreigner so yeah, what do you think they're going to think about um, the African American that comes uh -huh. over there you know um, we're foreigners we're not them yeah. they don't look right. at us as them. they don't and they got that one thing, um, you know, um, what do they call that, man? I cannot think right now to where, you know, it's just hatred on like people like South Africans are fighting. Mm -hmm. Kenyans. Yeah, I, I, know I, mean, what, I, I know what the word you're think. looking for, but I can't think of it either. Damn, I cannot think of it. But, you know, these Pan-Africans, man, these dudes, 
they never really tell the truth. That's that's one problem I always had with them. And not only that, they don't tell the truth. And they're not in Africa either. And they ain't never been to Africa. And if they go to Africa, it's just going to be for a visit as a tourist. They're going to go mm-hmm. into the tourist spots. Mm-hmm. They're not going to go over there and move over there. It takes only the brave that would do that. But these dudes on YouTube with this Pan-African BS is what I call it. Nah, man. They're not authentic. They, they need to leave that alone, man. Because if you're not going to go to Africa and live, then there's no... I mean, why are you talking about Pan-Africanism and repatriation? Remember, Marcus Garvey, um, he died in a European country. Sure did. Didn't die in Africa. And he was supposed to be the, the main one I'm um, talking about. Um, Oh, xenophobia is the word that I was. Yeah, thinking. there you Xeno- go. Yeah, yeah there xenophobia. You go. Xenophobia. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. But you never hear these Pan-African dudes even speak on that type of stuff, man. They're just, you know, they have a couple African friends over here in America. They eat um at some African restaurants. Then all of a sudden you were you a damn um expert on Africa. <laughs> right. But but have and then you can't even um question them because you gotta also take into account why are these people from Africa coming over here to America if it's so right. great on mm-hmm. the continent? So just because you have some um African friends who moved over here to white to the white man's America mm-hmm. and you eat at a few um, African restaurants, but ain't never been to Africa, ain't never going to Africa. I know dudes 50 and 60 and 70, 80 years old, still talking that shit. <laughs> ain't. If you were 60, 70, and you still ain't been to Africa, man, boy, what? There's, there's a time, man, to just quit it, just stop it, man. I know that's right. 60 and 70, you're not going, man. If no. you ain't went to Africa and repatriated back to Africa by 60 and 70? When do you, I mean, what is it going to take for you to go? All these Pan-African dudes and these RBG dudes all I ever hear is, oh man, I'm trying to save up money. So if Africa was so great, shit, you would be able to, able to go over there and make a living. Absolutely. Be, right. What, what you need to save up money for? Just save up money for um a, 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 a plane ticket. And, and a little bit of money to start off with. It don't take much, five thousand mm-hmm. dollars to start off with, plus a plane ticket. And then mm-hmm. you can go over there and repatriate back to Africa. But these dudes are not going to do that. I'm tr- trust and believe some of these RBG dudes and these Pan Africans. I would donate some money. I would donate for them to get to their five thousand if they was going to seriously go back to the con. I mean, but go back over there it's, and it's stay white over there. Don't come back. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, if you saw Pan African, go over there, stay over there, and don't come back. Get a one way, get one way ticket, one way ticket, and go over there, stay over there, and don't come back. Right, enjoy yourself, go ahead, brother Tyler. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, I mean, I mean, you said it all. I mean, go over there and, and be there. There's Caucasian people that will help you if you if if you if you promise not to come back or whatever. They will help you get over there. White folks would do it. Take your get out of get out of our country. There's a lot of white people that would donate to that cause. They'd be happy. Get you out of here. The less Negroes it is, the better. They would they would support that effort. I would support that effort. I'd be glad when y'all ass is gone. Because you ain't you no benefit being here. You so in love with Africa. Take your ass over there and be with them. But see, this is the thing about it. If I had that mindset, I don't give a damn. If I had didn't have nothing, I'll make it there. Those African people come here and don't, a lot of them don't even have a dime. The only thing they have is their shirts on their back. And they come here with no money, no nothing. And they're willing to risk their lives. Some of, some of those people have drowned. They've, they've suffocated in, in the back of trucks trying to get here. Whatever it takes to get here, they're willing to get here. If you're so in love with Africa like that, you're willing to do the same thing. Get over there, suffer. And then go over there and make it like the people come here and making it. They're not going to do that. So, you know, that's, the whole thing is phony to me. I don't, I don't like that. It's phony. Yeah, I agree. 
Yep, I definitely agree. They're not gonna these RBGs and you know these um blackity black Pan African dudes. They're not gonna denounce their U.S. citizenship. They're not. I, yo, I would donate a thousand dollars. I'm talking about as much as soon as I could. I would put. Whatever I could put, I would donate a thousand dollars towards your five thousand to get you over mm -hmm. there, Africa. But you have to stay over there, right? If you so pan African, now, brother, I'm not trying to make mockery or take shots at Africa. My thing is, see, I would go back to the continent, but first of all, the white man owes me my reparations <laughs> for all the. Okay, see, here's the thing: there would. Now I would start a GoFundMe, and white folks could um, they could um join up on this one. I need a million dollars for all the my 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 um my family, my descendants, uh, pick and cut slaves, my um Nigerian ancestor who was kidnapped and raped and tortured and brought over here. I need a couple of million dollars, and I, I want a a boat, um. I want a boat ride back. I don't like um, airplanes. I want to go back the same way you brought my ancestors. But I also I want my reparation money first. Now, if anybody out here, hopefully Michael Jordan or somebody with a whole lot of money can hear this. If you don't want me here in the business, <laughs> give me my couple of million dollars in reparation money and my boat trip back and I will be gone tomorrow. <laughs> and I mean that. I, I swear on that. Give me my couple million dollars that my ancestors um, um, work for and give me one way boat trip um, ticket. I mean, one way. Yeah. Back to Africa with my millions of dollars and I will be gone. man. I'll be out of here tomorrow. Well, you I know, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's not going to happen. They don't. They would rather kill you before they give you a million dollars to go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they, they rather yeah. they rather kill you first. It's e uh, you know bullets. You know they they rather go to the gun store and buy a, a couple of bullets, much cheaper than give you a million dollars. Yeah, but see, that's what my ancestors. Were. Oh man, my ancestor was raped. My ancestors were, were up in the cotton fields. Well, these people, even the Negroes, don't give a damn what happened to your ancestors. They said, "Look, I'm living my life. I play basketball, and you know, I'm living. I'm, I'm, I'm screwing white women, Italian women. You know, I don't care about you and your damn ancestors." Wow, that's, that's the way crazy. Negroes be thinking. It they don't care nothing about that kind of stuff. See, that's this is the type of mentality because it's it's really our parents' fault because I know, like for me, it was Elijah Muhammad's books and stuff that gave me. Uh, a heads up on what's the reality of what I was dealing with and, and facing. My mother, grandmother, grandfathers, none of my people sat with me and said, look, this is the South and we're going through Jim Crow. This is Jim Crow. They done killed lots of... They, they never taught, taught us children nothing. And most, most of our parents haven't taught their children and still to this day, don't teach their children the history or, 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 or nothing at all. They just put us, they just spit us out like we, we, we pieces of shit. And if you make it, you make it, you don't, you don't, you know, we on our own, you know, you got to use your brain to try to figure stuff out on your own and blah, blah, blah. They don't teach us. They ain't teaching us nothing. But you never you know? address this one thing that I said about my name, um, master supremacy. Cause I remember you, bro. It used mm -hmm. to always be against, um, now used to always say, and correct me if I'm wrong. That we should not treat the the pinks the way that they have treated our people. So this, you, you, this is the problem you, with uh, that. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is the problem with that. The problem with that is you're not punishing the ones that need to be punished. You punishing people that ain't do a damn thing to you. You just punishing them. You punishing them based solely on their skin color and not what they done. That's not fair. That's not just. My people, my people were punished and didn't do nothing. Well, you need to deal deal with the ones who actually done. Well, why shouldn't I be the same as them then? Well, then you're not just and you're not fair either. That's that's not just. I'm a fair person. I'm a just person. I'm not going to hurt you unless you hurt me. You didn't do nothing. <laughs> if this person didn't do anything to me. Why would I turn around? You you just you just like them, you just like them. Yeah. So okay, 
Bro, man, see, now we debate time. So you love white folk. I don't love white folk. <laughs> no, I'm just, yo, bro, don't take it serious, man. I'm just saying, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just asking the question, man. Do you, you love white? I mean, do you? I, I don't care about white folk. I mean, none of them. I follow Dr. Khalid, Malcolm and X. He was, he was black foolish. supremacy. They and there was, matter of fact, even Elijah Muhammad never even taught that. You treat a person like you want to be treated. Yeah, you cannot, I agree with that. You cannot, you cannot treat people. How are you going to, how are you going to hurt somebody that never done a damn thing to you just solely based on, on the color of, of their skin? That's not, that's not Man. fair. That's not just. You need to get the ones that did it. But unfortunately, we can't get the ones who actually were the perpetrators of the crime. It's just okay, like, look, there if are own, some... like if you own the bank, no. it's like this. If you own the bank, yeah. you own yeah. the bank. Mm -hmm. And and the, and you couldn't get the one that actually robbed the bank. You're going to punish his children that had nothing to do. They weren't in your bank. No, I'm not going to punish. They might benefit. Yeah, okay. Well, the, all I want is my money. I'm not going to punish them. But give me my money back. And if you stand in the way of me getting my money, then yes, you are the same as they are. Because you are holding okay, on to this capital that. that was stolen. Yes, sir. Now, I understand. I agree with that. I, underst I agree with that logic. I agree with that logic. Any cracker that's in the way of me getting reparations, like the this Mississippi campaign, any of them get in the way of making that a reality, I would have a serious, serious problem with. Yes, that's that's different. But to but to just punish somebody and they ain't doing nothing to you, I, I, I'm not into that. I can't I can't do I can't. Yeah, no. You know, okay, it's just like I people. Agree, I agree with you there. I agree yeah. with you there. But I but see, okay. I guess I just want to make sure that you know my position is clear. All right, reparations is old. Um, so what I'm talking about is there are banks, there are institutions, institutions, the American government. Look at how much it prospered off of um mm -hmm. slavery. So those who are standing up in the way in Congress, standing up in the way, up in uh, uh the all these, these all white juries, no, bro. bro there, there is no, I'm not saying, I'm not calling them all out, but what mm -hmm. I'm saying, yes, there are still people, even though the original um, white, I mean, pinks who actually did this to my people are long gone, but there are still people who are benefiting from this and they are standing right. up um, in Vanguard, you know, um, doing this, man. So, yeah, so my, my hatred is just. I have my hatred. It's just like is just. this. It's just like this. Okay, well, America, the government, is the perpetrator of the crime. They're the one that, that made everything legal. So a lot of our attention is toward the government, also to those institutions like banks that was involved in the slave trade and banks and, and, and drug companies. It's a lot of people that was involved in the slave trade. And there's people, there's organizations that existed prior to uh uh what's his name? Uh, Yvette Cornell and all those people and talking about reparations. There's people been fighting for reparations ever since the slaves came off the slave plantation. They've been fighting for reparations. And the problem is the government is not going to, of course, the, the government is not going to, to, they're not interested. I don't care if they gave the Native Americans uh, reparations or who... But they're not going to do it for you. So the thing about Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign is, well, since these suckers, you know they're not going to and not enter, and we don't have the power to actually take what we want, then we're going to have to be smart enough to take advantage of the laws and the policies of this nation and get it on your own. And there's nothing they can do because it's, everything is legal. But you have to be smart enough to do that. You, you know, and so that's what Operation Exodus Mississippi is about. You're going to get your reparations, whether they like it or not, but you got to be smart enough and be able to make that sacrifice and be wise enough to do that. But see, that's a big job. And it goes back to what we were saying earlier about these pro-blackly black folks. They don't want that. For, they want you to stay in the position that you're in 
so they can benefit, so they can teach you. They don't want you free. They just want you to, to teach you and give you education and give you, and sell you the DVDs and go to debate. That's all they want for you. They don't want an actual for real change. They don't want that because if you get into a position where you're doing fine, all these teachings and all this stuff that they represent don't mean nothing. It carries no kind of weight. Who would because you you're say? too busy okay. building. Yeah. Yes, all this teaching and stuff, all this teaching and stuff is for universities and colleges. The people themselves don't give a damn about all this history yeah. stuff. Yes, sir. I oh, I agree with that. Well, who would you, okay? What would you say was the last um, accomplishment that was made to benefit black people up in this country? I mean, we're not talking about them uh, fake YouTube um, um, master teachers, but I'm talking about the real a real accomplishment. See, that's you see what I'm saying. Like Dr. Martin Luther King, I can see a real accomplishment being done. Rosa Parks, mm -hmm. Nat Turner. I mean. Well, Nat Turner did what he did, but, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately, man, you know, he was taken by the powers that be, but, um, you know, he, he, he tried, but what I'm saying is, I mean, you know, legit, like, okay, on an everyday basis, like when I just wake up every day, I'm able to go into any restaurant. Of course, there are certain restaurants, white folks, they'll make it perfectly plain and clear that they don't want my ass up in there. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. But what I'm saying, my people fought for the right, you know, um, to just be able to sit on the front of the bus, to sit in any seat. That's a, I still sit on the back of the bus unless there's no seats back there or unless <laughs> there's some like criminals back there. But what I'm saying mm -hmm. is just my people to fight for these type of rights, like rights that you could actually see, that you benefit from, that what our people fought for. Our people fought mm -hmm. to end slavery. They fought for voting rights or whatever that is they fought for um mm -hmm. the end of segregation i mean these are things that we actually benefit from today i could just go to mcdonald's i could go to the movie theater i don't have to sit up in the um, peanut gallery i don't have to right. you know going through the back doors i'm talking about stuff that you can see that you benefit from i'm trying to see that's where my attention has always been. But unfortunately, man, I got sidetracked with all of this old crazy stuff, man, that these dudes are selling out here. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. What would you I was say part about of it? But my go ahead, bro. Yeah, go yeah, ahead, bro. I was part of all that for years, but my main focus, of course, was the Nation of Islam. I was part of, you know, Nation of Islam stuff. What would you say, man? I mean, was the Nation of Islam... Okay, all right, let's get into the Nation of Islam. Has the Nation of Islam, first of all, been beneficial in your life? And was it beneficial in the lives of Black people? I just want to see. Um, sh should we totally condemn the Nation of Islam? I'm just asking, bro, taking it from somebody who was there. Has it been beneficial? Did it ever... Yeah. Was it ever beneficial in your life? And has it ever been beneficial in the lives of Black people? people what must be understood about the nation of, of islam is the name tell you exactly what they are about it's about converting you to a religion islam they use the black oppression they use black oppression as a selling point in order for you to accept islam but they are not a revolutionary organization. They're not an organization of, of liberation. They are a religious organization, which means the only thing you'll be doing is going from one slave plantation to another. And Elijah Muhammad was the new slave owner, the sl new slave master. You go to the new plantation, it's all about Elijah Muhammad. And it's, Islam is not our religion. So they want to guide you to become part of the Arab clique, you know, those people in, in, in Arabia. So you're just going from one slave master to another. Even I never even really, never really tripped off of it because of the explanation the Nation of Islam gave 
for Master Farad Muhammad being uh, looking like a, a cracker boy. But that's the, they make mockery of white Jesus, but the nation of Islam had a white image of Jesus that they worship too, because Master Farad Muhammad looked like a white boy. It's yes, the sir. Same thing. Okay, and yes, it also, is. and look, and also, I'm sticking with that. Yeah. All the images, all the images of the nation of Islam is, is light skinned blacks over, over dark skinned blacks. You never see all these images. You always see the light skin over the dark skin, but they teaching Dr. Black, blackity black black. But but that's Dr. not what Khaled. you see. You see. Oh well, they you know of course they got rid of him. Yeah, Dr. yeah. yeah. And well, out okay. of their whole history, look out of their whole sure history. Yeah. Huh? Now I want to make sure that out you their cover whole this. History, wasn't that the best that black folks had during that time? That's all I'm asking. Um, I just want to I want to make sure that you cover that as well. Wasn't that the black, I mean, the best that black folks had during that time of oppression? I mean, man, oh man, I mean, what, Elijah Muhammad was born when? In the 20s? In the uh, late 1800s? When was he born? Because uh, I don't yeah, know late, the history. Late 1800, yes. I believe. Wasn't that the best that black folks had during that time? I'm just asking, bro. Yeah, it, it actually, I mean, Again, it was the best that we could do at that particular moment in time. I mean, all, everybody played a role. The Black Panther Party, SNCC, uh, even the Marcus Garvey prior to Elijah Muhammad, Noble Drew Ali, all these people doing all these various different things, they served their time and they served their purpose. Unfortunately for us, a lot of this stuff was, was religious-based. A lot of these people was corrupt. And unfortunately, a lot of they didn't know what they was doing. I mean, they, they don't know nothing about no. What do a slave fresh from the plantation? I talked about this on my Soul Liberation Day. We have to understand that our people basically just was fresh from slavery. We was only, look, during the time of Marcus Garvey, Brother Craig, actual physical slaves were still alive in the 1930s who actually lived a slave life. They were still alive in the 1930s. And the last child of a physical slave died in 2002. So it wasn't oh. that long ago. Oh, man, that's hurtful. We and only do understand we, why I hate, why, why I have hatred up in my heart, though. Don't you? I course. mean, is my hatred not justified? I should, it's justified. I hate, but I hate them all. It's justified. But also at the same time, you don't want to be, you don't want to be like the oppressor. I can't love you. Don't want to be like the oppressor. I hate, bro. I hate them all, man. I, any, I, I just want to. I mean, what's is that too much to ask to be in a community up in a what is uh, the a benefit or a, or a country just on my own people? Is that too much to ask to where I don't have to deal with with, with their um. The biggest man sticking their nose up in the air because I have a different color of skin. Is that too much to ask to want to be a, with my own kind and to have hate? Well, the thing about it is, yeah, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Well, the thing about it is, that's 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 on us to accomplish and do. We're not, you know, if you want to do that, then it's up to us to accomplish that feat. Nobody is interested. If you're not interested in doing that, don't expect nobody else to, to do that. And it's also delusional to believe the oppressor is going to help you accomplish that because they like things just the way they are. When are they going to let us go, though? Like, let us go as a people, bro. The truth is coming out of me, man. When are they going to let us go as a people? Like, God damn it, I don't want to be around these goddamn people, man. But that's I your don't opinion. Want to Yes. That's your opinion. Well, I, I'm not taking it. Yeah. yeah, that's the cool. Stay with them. Yeah. Yeah, stay with them. Bro, why can't I get let free? I want to be free you from can. these people, man. How much How? work did you do yesterday to get free? But I'm, I, I don't even know what direction to be working towards. I want to be free well, from these people. 
from their governments, their police, their military. I want to be free from these people, man. What's it well, for what all? You, what did you do yesterday but to come to that answer? I don't have to answer. I don't even know what to do to See, get that's free. What I'm saying. But then I don't you got that. but then you got people like myself that come out here and we offer Mississippi campaign. We offer we offer a, a vision and a plan, and then we get laughed and made mockery of. Nobody wants to help. What help is needed, though, bro? Remember, remember, I used to, man, I used to do everything, man, to try to uh, organize to the best of my ability. I just think, I, I was going to be honest with you, bro. I just think that, man, it's just way too, it's going to, man, that is one big feat. That's like, yeah, that's a big feat. Well, but a slave it's, it's, back during slavery that he was going to be free. You know how many black people laughed and, oh, we, they was happy on the plantation? Black people, like black people have been trained and bred to be slaves. Bro, back yeah, during that's a the middle of slavery, how, how many um, slave, black slaves do you think would have believed that they would have ever been free? Like, what they percentage really, do you... Go ahead, bro. Look, the, the reality is the majority of slaves didn't give a damn about being free. They, they was born into the slave life this is just how things go. And and even the cracker even told them and was teaching them, you know, this is the natural way of life. So they weren't interested. You know, this is how life is. And and if you've been in that system for hundreds of years, who wouldn't think that way? Like, oh, this is just how things is like this is just life, how it goes. You know, they've been doing this for, for hundreds of years. Anybody would think that. You know, I mean, look, I understand talent, and you should, but I guess you wasn't locked up long enough. Look, do, do you know I had to fight myself to get out of that institution? I really had to every day concentrate. I want to get out of here. I had to keep that on my mind 24 hours a day because I was locked up for so long. I got used to and actually sort of like being locked up. That's the reality. That was the, that's the truth of the matter. I mean, I didn't have to work. I basically lived a good, comfortable life. I didn't have to pay no bills. I had I had make friends. I was like, you know, people like me in that place. I was living pretty decent and good. You know, I got anything that I basically wanted. I mean, oh, wow. I just they couldn't go nowhere. You well. They was feeding yeah. you well. I so was, the this before, was this before or after <laughs> um, Minister Farrakhan had you sleeping on pickle barrels up in the basement? Oh. Was that? Well, which, was, which came first? <laughs> I was I was 18 years old when I was sleeping on pickle barrel. Oh, so that, oh, that was before you was actually, um, um, put into bondage, yeah, for those ten years. Oh wow, yeah. man. Okay. Oh wow. And it got to so, the point, like I, I told you, that's why I always agree to... with you. I always mm -hmm. agree with what you say. You said you know you, you have no interest in trading um a, a, a pink um slave master for a, a Negro slave master, man. I, it could be worse. I, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you on that. I agree with and you, you on and that. You, have, you put out a video on your channel. And it, 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 it hurt me. It was a video you put on your channel and they took them, the women and children out there and shot them in the head. Oh, yeah. Oh, that hurt me, too. It's still on that other channel. This is oh, it's yo, that channel. Yeah. Well, OK, that channel. I'm not on that channel. I'm on my new channel that I okay. sent you an email. To, you know, they got that channel. That channel's on block for like um, two more days. Yeah, okay. I can't even go live on that channel. But okay. no, this was a. Um. Yeah, Cameroon. This was um. Yeah, Cameroon. Yeah, there there was supposed to be some suspected um members of Boko Haram or whatever. Yeah, and, you know, like that's that. on yeah. the, the continent, man. You got all these militants and you know this tribalism. Yeah. And you get you get these um fake Pan African dudes over here. They act like tribalism doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But it does. That's why. Well, Craig. Craig. Yeah. Yeah. How can you do that to 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 Okay, a grown woman and she got certain ideas and you want to squash that and you want to kill the grown woman. How can you do that to the child, to the to the children? Okay, well, I'm going to say this. Though. Okay, do you understand she was being accused of being a member of Boko Haram. The right. lead Boko Haram went up into a school of girls and mm -hmm. kidnapped over, I believe, 100 to 200 um, little baby girls up mm -hmm. in school 
So she was being accused of being a member of that group, that terrorist mm-hmm. organization. So what was one or two little babies when this group that she's affiliated with, there's no telling what type of position that she played up there that's responsible for um taking two or three hundred baby girls. So mm-hmm. are two little little babies worth more than um hundreds? Well, I don't. I don't I know. know. I, I know it sounds. It sounds. It, it sounds really bad, though. But you got to do more research and see what she was accused of being a member of. Was a group called Boko Haram, yeah. who had went into a school and kidnapped hundreds of babies, uh, baby girls, though African baby girls, hundreds of. And this is another thing about those them. places. But go ahead. There's another ahead, thing bro. about those places too. Their their criminal justice system is. is it's probably worse than America's. I mean, and America, you can mess around and have a chance because they'll send you to jail and you might have an opportunity to redeem yourself. But in places like that, once they... <laughs> then you once get they, a fair trial, at least, over here for the <laughs> most part. You get a trial. Right. Now, not to yeah, say a fair trial. I take right. that back. I take that back. But over there, <laughs> right. it's just a mob. They just send it a mob. And right. you know, there's, a, there was a, there's another video, man. See... But but these Pan Africans, man, they hate when I put out uh, stuff about the dark side of Africa because they go to talking about we need to tell the good side of Africa. I mean, what for? Yes, we t- we should tell the good side. The good side um should be commended, mm-hmm. but we have to teach people that Africa is in turmoil. It's not as good as um uh, people think it is. But yeah, no, there was um um four um elder um African women in Kenya who were burnt alive mm-hmm. <laughs> they, they were um accused of witchcraft of all mm-hmm. things burnt alive accused that, of witchcraft that video is way too hot hot for YouTube YouTube would can shut my whole channel down because this shows the actual uh, murders they were burnt alive just for being mm. accused of witchcraft wow my mom, no trial no, nothing. Mm-hmm. It was just an accusation was made. Right. Somebody up in the community who the community respects could just make a false allegation against you. And then all of a yeah. sudden you accused of this shit. And here you got this mob coming to massacre you. You know what I'm saying? There's no justice. They call it mob justice, bro. Yeah, mob justice. Yeah, well, they I'm did sorry. that here. They did that here in America too, you know, the Salem Witch Trial. And most of the time, most of the time, the victims is women. Most of the time. Yeah, man. So but I, I just, I just want to. I, my thing, it's not about, it's not about right and wrong, but the facts of the matter, and trying to be as accurate with the facts as possible. And I'm gonna tell you, people keep telling me why you think the way you think. Well, I was thinking this way for a long time. But then I'm going to tell you, I said, I said, if you really want to blame somebody for messing my head up or whatever, that really was one of the nails that, 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 that uh, put it in a coffin for me to cause me to think the way that I think. I said, y'all need to blame Brother Craig. Craig? <laughs> How are you going to blame Craig? Craig is a Pan-African. Craig taught me about the, farm, the breeding farms. Oh, yeah. Oh, damn. oh, come on. Oh, wow. Wow. So I'm being. Oh, oh but I ta- so I taught you about the breeding farms. You didn't know. I never that? I never knew it. Nothing about the breeding farm. You oh, taught man. me and brought that up and told me about the breeding farm. OK, Goodbye, I Uncle Tom. Of- did you watch that movie? Goodbye, Uncle Tom. Yeah, but, you know, so I never tripped off the breeding. F- I never tripped off of it. <laughs> until you made it until you made a specific topic and targeted that. And then I'm saying, wait a minute, because I already was thinking that we're not that we're hybrid people. I already was thinking in that direction anyway. But when you said, but when you talked about the breeding farms, it made it even worse because with the breeding farms, we was made to interbreed with our mamas, daddy, cousins. You know, biologically, we don't even know who we related to for real. That made things even worse. Yeah, and you know, after slavery, of... yeah, after slavery, when they released us and, and whatever, 
a lot of us, we were separated from our biological parents and, and children and even adults. We adopted other people as family. You ever heard the quadroon boss? Uh-uh. The, quad, the quadroon boss. Okay. What they used to do. All right. In the breeding farms, the white man, all right, they were ex doing experimentation, right? And they was creating these, you know, these light-skinned hybrid women. Like, mm -hmm. they was trying to, you know, they would, it was like a recipe. You mix with a little bit of uh, Irish, a little bit of British, a little bit of Spanish, a little bit of Negro, a little bit of this mm -hmm. and that. And you know how we got so many different variations. Like, especially when we talk about these sisters, like, I mean, well, these light skin, what they call red bone sisters, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the quadroon boss, um, all right, they, um, during the, um, the breeding farms or whatever, um, the white man was trying to make the perfect mix of, 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 of a, a, a woman, a female, mm -hmm. and he could go raping, you know, that we, he would find attractive and beautiful that's why you got all these what they call like foreigns that's what they call it. i mean they they mix with like you see you know some of these light-skinned sisters or whatever man they mix with so much you don't even know a little bit of indian a little bit of mm -hmm. that's the white okay so they had something called the quadroon boss and i want to make sure that this is um on the record um you need to look it up to where um you know, the, the slave master, whatever, man, they, you know, like you heard of um, Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hennings. Yeah. What, how he was raping Sally Hennings and, you know what I'm saying, doing all that type of stuff with her. But, um, yeah, the white man was trying to create, um, you know, his perfect little, um, uh, man, sex slave. Right. Yeah, so he could, he could rape. He could. He basically he could rape a black woman without raping a black woman. A black woman that looked like a white woman, so he could feel better. Okay, this is you know he looked like a white woman, but she really a black woman type thing. Yeah, he was trying. To, <laughs> yeah, he was trying to create um a perfect breed, just like the creation yeah. of the pit bull, the German Shepherd. Right. Now we think right. German Shepherd is being a purebred, but German Shepherd is not a purebred. It no. got a little bit of wolf dog up in it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I mean, it's a mixture, but mm -hmm. now it's been classified as being a purebred. Got a little bit of German Shepherd up in it. Got a little bit of, uh, I mean, not a little bit of German Shepherd, but it got a little bit of real wolf. Right, real wolf. Up in, yeah, up in the um, German Shepherd. Got a mixture of all different type. Of, I, I believe a little bit of husky. You know, the Siberian mm -hmm. husky is a mm -hmm. mixed breed. Yeah. It's a wolf dog. I got a little bit of real wolf up, up in it as well. It mixed with other breeds of dogs. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. you know, um, but yeah, man, I mean, yeah, those breeding farms, man, that that right there is something else, man. Yeah, it was. And I, like I said, I did not trip off of it. I didn't really pay attention to it. And I saw that movie, like you said, I saw that movie, but I didn't really think about that process or think about it until you actually focus on it and he was talking about it i'm like wow and then i began to think about you know my own family i got a i got an uncle we used to call jesse and for years i thought that was my uncle jesse and of course you know your uncle is your mother's brother okay come to find out he's just a good friend of the family and we call him uncle jesse he wasn't he wasn't my mother's brother at all he was just a family friend but you know we do that with people we a lot of us do that with people. We adopt friends, you know, close friends of the family, and we call them uncles and aunts and stuff like that. Wow, you're breaking something. Man, you're really breaking something else up to me now. Now, another problem that I have with the Black community is we're not, like, as close-knit as we once were. Like, what you just said, what you just spoke on. Yeah. How, I mean, man, we used to be a community. All the stories that I've ever heard, black folks of all people were united because we had nothing else but ourselves. Right. But now since integration and, you know, we got certain black folk out here that, you know, what I mean, they could be billionaires like Oprah Winfrey, not taking no shot at the system, but I'm just saying we got mm -hmm. the, we got Kevin Samuels. 
you know, multi-millionaire. We got the Michael Jordans. You can mm-hmm. have something now. You could um, be a millionaire. You could have more of the uh, white American um, pie. So now mm-hmm. we don't have to be close knit like that no more. Right. How we used to be back in Mississippi. I told you mm-hmm. my people come from Mississippi, and there was a time to where you could leave your front door wide open. There was a time yeah, here in Michigan where mm-hmm. you could leave up in the ghetto, what they classify mm-hmm. it now as, but it was never that. You could leave your, uh, as a black person, you could leave your front door wide open. Sure could. You did not have to, the least thing you had to worry about was another black person coming up in there stealing from you. Like, yo, I heard stories, bro, and I know this to be fact. You could leave your door open all night. You would have a brother or a sister or just anybody from the black community that would just come up into the house, uh, pour, come in, pour them some coffee, get them a mm-hmm. cup of milk, get them a slice of bread, and he wouldn't harm none of you. Wouldn't mm-hmm. harm your children, wouldn't harm nobody. Get his little um cup of coffee, a slice of bread, a Whatever that they ate at the time, neck bone, mm-hmm. yeah, come out your refrigerator while you're sleeping, and would be on be gone on off, and yeah, take his food and then um, walk on off the door, close the um screen door behind. You know what I'm saying? But this is wh- what I fight for because I just fight for black people to be unified, man. That's why I'm so harsh. That's why, man, I talk the way I talk sometimes, mm-hmm. and I know. Um, I say some very foul things. Yes, I do. Because we, as black people, are not a family. Mm-hmm. We're not a family. And until we get back to that, yes, I'm going to have smoke for black people. Yes, because I'm, I, I want those days to come back. I'm doing the things that I need to do to make those days possible. But you got black folk who got a little bit more. They got a, yeah. a, a more fancier car. They got a shiny a, a shinier suit, a more expensive suit than I could ever afford. Mm-hmm. So now they don't need that. They don't need that because the white white folks, the white man, is giving them um, these trinkets and stuff, man. Just like in the beginning of the movie, Goodbye Uncle Tom. That's why I get tired of black people fighting over the Democratic and Republican Party. Because mm-hmm. it's just like in the opening scene of the movie, Goodbye Uncle Tom, you have the white man, white daddy, sitting up at the dinner table. And you had two little African slaves up underneath. And, you know, after the white man get done, um, he'd leave a little bit of meat on the bone and throw down the table scraps. And these two huh. babies, these two African babies will fight over them. That's why I'm tired of hearing um, Negroes call themselves black Democratic, black Democrats and black Republicans fighting over the white, like, have you, man, has it, did, does it ever bother you when you hear these uh, black people up here? Now all of a sudden they support Donald Trump. <laughs> they support Joe Biden. They support white politicians, white politics, but they're pan African. How can you be pan African? Mm-hmm. Pan African is about black people. Um, like, like what you were talking about, the Mississippi campaign, us taking yeah. over the political power for our own. But now Absolutely. you got these RBG dudes, they pro-Trump. These pan-African Trump. dudes, pro-Trump. Come on, man. I mean, if Trump want to get on, on the bandwagon and get with our program, I understand. But if he ain't on the program, which I think Trump, out of out of all the people in our, in our, in our generation, uh, out of all the politicians, we might have had a better chance dealing with Trump as president than anybody, any other sucker to try to get what we want if we were serious about. But see, this is the thing about it. You cannot go to Trump or any president or you can't go to the government and you really don't have a specific. What do you want? OK, you want me to support you and blah, blah, blah. What exactly do you want? I just want reparations. How? You know, you got to be able to. You know, is it feasible? Because the see, because you know, you can get the president on your side, but the, but it's going to take an act of Congress to get what you want. So, okay. what is how are you going to present this so that the president can, the president or even any one of those senators, people in Congress, 
which they tried before. But see, we, we don't have no pull. Nobody cares nothing about what we're talking about because we have no power. But if we control the state of Mississippi and gain some real power and influence, especially with the presidency, the president, whoever running for president, is going to respect the state of Mississippi because he might need those electoral votes in order to take him over the top. So he's going to he's going to do whatever he has to do in order to appease the people of Mississippi if we control that power base. But you don't have no power at all. Nobody going to who, who listens to the bum on the street? Nobody listens to the bum on the street because you have no power to do nothing. But if, if you thought that that bum could blow your brains out, you would have you would give him respect, but you don't have the respect for the bum on the street because they don't have no, no power. You know, a gun would give that bum some power. Give me your damn wallet, nigga. Now you That's what I'm it. talking to. Yes, sir. That's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about, man. I mean, man, remember I told you, bro, you, man, and I, I know, man, you're going to start laughing when I say this, but I did tell you this before, man. Oh, man, you would make a one good preacher, man. And I, I don't want to say, <laughs> <laughs> no, remember I told you, man, you need to be getting your reality as a temple, um, um, not internet ministry, but real mm -hmm. ministry. And get a podium. I'm talking about get you a little start off with a yeah, little Yeah, I know you told building, me about even that if back it's a the shack, day. Even if it's a yeah. shack. And uh, preach, man, and get you. Man, I swear to God, I man, I would come, man. And I, I, there are other brothers and sisters who would come, who would want to mm -hmm. hear your message. And not only that, though, bro, I mean, man, we need to, man, stop with the, the foolishness, man. We need to come back together, unite, bro, and get this ministry, get this real life ministry. The Internet mm -hmm. is how you, you know, what I'm saying just like the, um, you know, the spider or whatever, you know, first he sets up a web mm -hmm. so the Internet could could be the web to catch black people. I'm not saying to catch to eat them and you know, maybe that's a bad analogy, but I'm just using it <laughs> right. Like the internet will be that's the way that we should stay on the internet. The the, the realities temple internet ministry should stay on the internet because you get other people, but it also needs to be there needs to be a physical location, man. Yeah, I, I agree. Hey, you you never did. No, but you never was for that. There needs to be a physical, even if it's a little shack or something, man. We could get some equipment. All you need is a microphone, just some cheap speakers, man. We could. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, but first, the physical location, the temple. Well, I could actually get that done. I just can't. I can't do it by myself. I, you know, I can't. I can't do it by myself. I can't. Can't get any help. Yeah, I wouldn't so mind doing need, that. And we need to, quite frankly, ahead, honestly, also at the same time, to be honest. You know, I'm almost 60 years old and I'm also fighting this damn disease. And I'm just just tired. I'm tired, hurt, and wore down. Wait a sec. This disease. Yeah. What disease? Cancer. Oh man, come on, man. Seriously? Yeah. I heard some people, man, say that and try to make micro view, but I, I had never heard that from my your mouth personally, so I didn't know that. Well, I mean, I mean, Sister Noble knows because she's seen the paperwork and she put it out there. So, yeah, I heard people, but I thought, man, it was just a rumor, man. It was just a, another tip. She's not going to show. Slander. She's not going to show the paperwork because she know that's a that's an absolute no no. But she went on. Yeah, she went on and told her. people. So, yeah, yeah, I ain't hear yeah. from her. Though. I heard it from somebody else. Well, that's where it comes from. I, it comes from her. Yeah. She told. That's what she she been telling everybody. My bit, my personal bit. She even told people. My actual city location, because I live in the St. Louis area, but I never said exactly where. And she told people my actual city, where I stay at. Damn, bro. Man, you're 60 years old? Almost. Two years. Oh, okay. Okay, 58. Okay, got you. Yeah. 58. So you like a year mm -hmm. underneath the car. Because, yeah, he's yeah. almost 60. He's 59 from what he says. Almost 60. So... Yeah, man. I mean, hey, man, like, yo, trust and believe. You know, I got my own ailments. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I already yeah, I know. Because there was a time there you was, you, was, you was off the map for a little while. There. You was going through some stuff. Yeah, and I know. I mean, I'm sure. You know, I know my day will come. And I'm just yeah. hoping to not 
man, I don't want to come, you know, my grandmother, man, died of um, colon cancer, man, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's, it's, hereditary, it's hereditary. And mm-hmm. sugar, diabetes, sugar diabetes is also hereditary up in my mm-hmm. family, high blood pressure. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I mean, man, I know I have a date, a day, and I know I have a time, you know what I'm saying, and all that. So I just try to, you know, just do the best that I can, you know, while I'm above ground. Right. Or whatever. But, you know, I just look at the state of black people and it's like, shoot, I got an auntie. Well, a great auntie, man. Shit, she's turned 90 some years old and she's back from that time to where when she went to school, you know, they used to white kids used to make fun of her. Her and my, my grandma, I mean, grandma is spit off on the bus and call them, you know, the N word and all that type of stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? And she's mm-hmm. still here. And, you know, I told her one time, I said, yes, um, granted, we understand, you know, how bad it was during those times. But at the same time, man, look at all these young black men who are being murdered, who ain't living to see no 90. Yeah. I'm talking, it's like Tupac, Biggie. Look at all these new rappers. Not only that, but look at Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. yes, that's why I even tell her. I mean, well, I told her. Yeah, that stuff was harsh that you was going through during them times. But shoot, there's black kids that was born in the 90s who ain't even ain't even going ain't haven't even made it to 25. Ain't made it to 23. There's, yeah. They made it to 15. Yeah. In these times. So, you know, boo-hoo. But I, I do have respect for what, you know, you, you know, the elders and stuff went through back in them days. But it's the youth that ain't making it till five. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, man, we as a people, man, damn, man. You know, man, wow. It's some. I, I just think, man, like you said um, back in the old video about the, the backyard Negro. As far as like. <laughs> And then you said something else about how they let us, you know, they let us off the uh, plantation and just placed up in the us up in the backyard. That's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And and, and you, know? you know what? A, it, it kills me when I used to watch a dog, you know, come out the house and they run the backyard. You know, I'm like, uh, or they put you on a leash. It gives you the feeling of being free. You know, it gives you the illusion of being free. But you're still locked up. You're still surrounded by a fence. You're still connected to a leash. You're, you're not free. But when you let that dog, I know we used to let the dog out and he run around in the backyard. He'd be so happy and just running around. I'm like, I'm like, uh, you ain't free. You know, do your do and come back in the damn house. <laughs> you know, and that's how we are. We we got this illusion like we're free. But whenever we really make a move, the, the cracker, he just pull the leash. Bring your nigga ass back. No, you can't do that. Shut up. Sit your ass down. You know, we're not free. We're not free. And it don't make no difference how much money we got. You know, Kanye West supposed to be the first billionaire rapper or triple billionaire rapper. Or so. I don't know what he's supposed to be. Anyway, with all his money, with all his fame, he don't have no power. Because he don't make no laws. You know, he don't control no resources. They can shut down Kanye West right now because he depend on Walmart. He depend on the electric company. He depend on all this stuff that he don't have no kind of control over nothing at all. True. Racist white cop could shoot Kanye West up in the head right now and go right now. in front of an all white jury and get acquitted. And get acquitted. That's right. No problem. No problem. Uh, Vanessa Williams was telling the story and she said she had just won Miss America or something like that. And she said she was at this event and uh, they had a buffet. You know, at a buffet, you don't get served. There's no waitresses or nothing. And she said this white woman walked up to her and said, I would like that. (laughs) And I would like this. Vanessa was like, what the hell are you telling me for? The white woman naturally thought she's supposed to serve her. (laughs) And, you know, she tripped off of that. Like, that just goes to show you 
you know, she, 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 she just won Miss America or whatever it was. You know, she, she doing her thizzy. And this white woman don't give a damn, don't even know who she is or whatever. Don't give a damn. I don't think she sees a, a black chick. Serve me. That's the only thing was on this, you know, this white woman. That's that's what she saw. Make sure you download this, bro, because you know they're going to take this down. We, we speak yeah. too much truth. They go, yeah. bro, they are going to trust me. This is going to get flagged eventually. If it if it's even still up after we get done, they, we we're speaking too much truth, man. They this is, <laughs> they don't want this type of truth getting out here to them. Um, well, it don't make um, any difference. I'm gonna put it on. I put it on my Facebook, and I also put it on my, uh, my Vimeo and you know other channels too. So it ain't gonna go nowhere. I still have it, and the only thing I do is re-upload it. As much as they want to flag it, I put it right back up. It don't make no difference to me. Hell, they just took down my channels. <laughs> You know, wow, all that work, old weasel ass uh, Sonetta. But, yeah, that dude's but charlatan. Man. Huh? Great. I said, man, Sonetta, man, is a charlatan, man. Yeah, he's a charlatan. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. He's a charlatan. He did all this dirt. And then he turned around talking about, uh, I need to go back, you know, to my, uh, to my roots and, and just teach and get stay out of these beefs and stuff. Now, you don't cause all this drama. All this riffraff. He got countless people that hate his guts, and he has made no effort to try to heal or try to make amends to what he has done. All of a sudden, he's supposed to just drop off the scene, and everybody, it's supposed, everything's supposed to be hunky dory, and I'm not going to be involved in beefs, beefs and stuff. No, that ain't how it works, sir. In order, in order for you to be sincere, you don't have to kiss nobody's ass, but you need to, just like me. He can go on, he can get in the partner sh Shada. They can go in and remove all their violations against my channel. And my channel come back up if, if he was sincere. They're not gonna do that. They're not they're not gonna do that. So remember they called him the Don King, bro. The Don yeah. King of consciousness, man. Don King was a remember what Don King man was stealing from Mike Tyson, man. I mean shit. Sure, what, he, he, he stole from everybody. He ripped yeah, all those guys. He can't. Oh, Sonetta came up into the game as being known that. Yeah. What type of what type of name is that, man? I mean, man, he he ain't. He just man, all he care about is having them gator, them gator boots, and driving his um European um BMW and having on fur coats and you know what I'm saying, man. <laughs> dude, even his teacher, Doctor Carly, spoke against that. Mm hmm. Yeah, man. Um. Yeah, man. You know, Sonetta, man. Um, yeah, bro. I no understand what's up. And see, he's also angry at me because I critique him throughout the years. But I never, I never critiqued him as a person because I don't care about him as a person. I never talked about his wife, his personal life, and I like that. I critique only the information or behavior. Even with Minister Farrakhan. I never said nothing about Minister Farrakhan's wife or his dog or whatever. I critique the information or behavior. I never critique or mess with them as a person. And he never, Sonetta never liked my critique of his so-called information. You know, who else is now you know who else is becoming a charlatan, man? And that's Dr. Umar Johnson. Like and I like Dr. Umar. I like him too, though. I still like um, a lot of his message, but he's becoming a charlatan too. He's letting that that fame yeah. go to his head, man. That's one of the problems. Now he's become so arrogant. He's the mm -hmm. prince of this. He's the reincarnation <laughs> um, since Marcus Garvey. He's the. I mean, what the hell has this Negro done to compare <laughs> himself? He's the best thing since Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. What has he done? I don't know. I mean, to to put th these type of labels upon himself. That's why I say he's, you know, he went on a Breakfast Club and um, he went on Vlad TV and all that mm -hmm. type of stuff. So, you know, all that success, man. Did you see um, Dr. Umar Johnson on Twitter posted a picture of some um sister or whatever, man, sent him uh, uh to his P.O. box a pair of panties. <laughs> pair of her panties and he posted it on mm -hmm. Twitter bragging on it 
And it's like, this is the man. Just imagine Marcus Garvey doing something like that. <laughs> this is the man that I'm supposed to send children of mine or black people, black parents are supposed to send their children to <laughs> a man that's posting pictures every five seconds. He's talking about um, cookies. <laughs> I mean, he's obsessed with men. Man. So that means that all these little babies, I'm just going to say it, all these little kids that's coming to a school, all these little young boys, um, don't you think that that sounds like he's going to be flirting with their mothers? Mm. Mm -hmm. I just got to tell it the way it is, bro. Like, it's not a good look anymore. It's it not. used to be a, his teachings are definitely, well, some of the things, but now his teachings are all clouded up. Donate to my cash up. I mean, you got to say that like 20, 30 times in one live stream. Mm -hmm. Cash app, dollar sign, um, FDMG Schools Academy or whatever the hell. Mm -hmm. And you always said that he was a, incompetent. He wasn't the man for the job for, for that type of school. And I, I mean, you said this at one point in time, but back then I really didn't understand, but he's mm -hmm. starting to show, man, his true colors. Like, I still like Dr. Umar Johnson as far as, like, some of the things that he says regarding, like, black history and stuff are still mm -hmm. accurate, but him being in a leadership position, no, because he's going to turn into a, just another char a money-hungry charlatan. Once he gets that money, the millions of dollars, man, you ain't, man, I bet you I couldn't even call Dr. Umar Johnson right now. And if no. I left him a voicemail, he wouldn't return my call. Mm -hmm. Hell no. Unless I got like a million YouTube um, subscribers. Right. Come on, man. That dude changed, though. I'm just going to be honest. He's all about I the remember, fame and money now. I met him briefly. I think it was 2000 and was it 15 when during, during his suit wearing day before, he, before he became gangster, you know, he, before he became gangster and, and hip hop, you know, he used to wear business suits all the time. And he was very professional. Uh, um, my sister was with me. She came, she went with me to, uh, and you know, I was really cool with, with pastor Ray Hagen at the time. And it was a celebration for Pastor Ray Hagen at his, uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm, his church. I forgot technically what they call it, the African Village. I met him briefly. He was a nice person. And we bought his uh, uh, book and, and shook his hand and he took pictures with. I mean, he was a cool, he, he acted real cool. And so this person that he's turning to now, I'm like, when the hell did this happen? You know, and, 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 and it really got to me. The first thing that got to me about Umar Johnson was when, <clears throat> cause I was getting ready to send him a hundred bucks, you know, donate to the school. I had to stamp on the envelope. Thousand. You said a thousand, not a hundred. You scared. No, I was going to no, send him a hundred. <clears throat> you told me a thousand dollar check, but okay, bro. No, yeah. no, no, it was, it was, a, it was a hundred. <clears throat> I, 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 I haven't, I hadn't, I don't know him enough to, to send him a grand. Matter of fact, I've never donated that kind of money to no organization or like that unless I thought for sure they was really doing something, accomplishing something. But I don't mind helping folks a little bit because <clears throat> I think that the school is a good idea. A lot of people thought the school is a good idea, and it's still a good idea. But we already got African-centered school. We already have those type of things. What, what are you going to do different than the African-centered schools that we already have in existence that, that need, need that support? But uh, when he said, and you probably heard this too, these these some trifling Negroes, they only get sent, you know, they, they only gave me two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's when he he began to turn me off because nobody don't have to send you nothing. Nobody don't know who you are. You don't have no experience running no school. We don't know. Nobody don't know who you. are. They just tripping off you emotionally on face value. And so I took my check out of the envelope cut my stamp off the envelope, and that was the end of that. And then next thing I know, he's caught up in stripper gate, you know, with the stripper. Then next thing you know, he's calling Seti all out his name, talking about your, your little yellow 
think that you want to be black Negro and, you know, talking about making mockery of how short and 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 said his skin color and stuff like that. I'm like, this guy, he really. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he's supposed to. I mean, wow, that right there. Like, OK, the conscious stripper. I did. Yeah. I gave him a pass on that originally. I did because mm -hmm. from the story that he was telling as far as like he was just at a conscious event and he met this black woman. He didn't know that she was a stripper at the time, supposedly. That, right. That's the story that he told. Mm -hmm. All right. So I gave him a little bit of pass on that because I understand. Now, I know the brothers are very, very weak in the knees when mm -hmm. it comes to the sister. So here, now, because I ain't going to lie, as much as I love um, I love my people, but I'm weak in the knees for a sister. Mm -hmm. Like, a, and she, you know, and that was a that was actually a beautiful looking sister right there. Right. So I can understand that. I mean, you know, he ain't phys as long as he ain't physically harming her or abusing her. Like, I can understand how sometimes, man, a brother will, well, you know, because he said that he was childish and all that type of stuff. But a brother could, could get childish because, man, a lot of brothers, man, well, I can't speak for other brothers, but I could just speak for myself. I will get weak in the knees for a sister that's looking right, that's looking good and you know what I'm saying? Looking. So I gave him a pass on that, just being mm -hmm. a brother. But when it came to the SETI joint, my issue was this is supposed to be a professional man. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand how he could be up in his feelings because but SETI was always a street dude, you know, just oh, the way yeah. he always talked. So yeah. that's in SETI's character to talk like that. I mean, when he was said he go to him in his lectures, every other word is your MF or this and your <laughs> right, your, your whole ass nigga. I mean, man, said he is just like just, just crazy, man. So said he said he came into the game with that type of stuff, right? That's how he, yeah. So, but like Umar, I expected a little bit more out of Umar. I did because too. Umar. Is supposed to be a professional brother, supposed to be an ex principal, supposed to, you know, he's creating this school. Like, how can you get up there with that um, that gangster stuff? And then we supposed to imagine the, the little um black boys who who will go to his school if it ever opens, but then we'll be able <laughs> to go on, go on YouTube. Oh, this is my principal talking like this. Right. This is. Oh, oh! I'm trying to get into Marcus Garvey. Uh, oh, I'm gonna listen to Dr. Umar Johnson talk about Marcus Garvey. But then next thing, video comes up is this type of video. What type of example is that setting? That's mm -hmm. what got me, bro. But go ahead, bro. That's what got me. Yeah, uh, this. Um, and he was on Jesse Peterson. I don't know if you've seen that interview. He was on. He was on Jesse Peterson uh, live stream, and. <coughs> I don't care too much for Jesse Peterson. I don't care too much for Tommy Sotomayor or whatever. But people like that, they do ask valid, credible questions. And when people like Umar Johnson, or I don't know if you're familiar with that, what's her name? Vicki Dillard on, on Boyce Watkins' uh, channel. Because she was on there. She was on Jesse Peterson uh, live stream, too. When they get caught up on some stuff that they can't really answer, the first thing they do, matter of fact, it even happens to me. Uh, when they can't come up with something, an uh, answer to one of your questions, the first thing they say, you, you a coon, you a sellout. Uh, that's not answering the question, sir. Answer the question. Uh, I appreciate that you, you are, that, that I'm a coon and I'm a sample. I appreciate that you recognize that. That does not answer the question, sir. They use that as a distraction tactic answer the question because Tommy, you know, Tommy and Jesse Lee Peterson, these people, you, you might call them a coon or that chick, the, the, the new chick on the block. What's her name? It's this, this, this female. Uncle What's Tom. Her name? Candace, uh, Candace Owens. Okay. Yeah. Uncle Tom or uh, Angie Mammy. Yeah. Those Angie type Mammy, of whatever you want to call them. <laughs> they bring credible, valid questions, inquiry, and you need to be able to answer those. Now, Tariq Nasheed, I give him credit where credit is due. I, Tariq Nasheed did a pretty good job on Jesse Lee Peterson show. I, I saw that interview. He did a pretty good job. But a lot of these pro blackly black type people, they they lose their concentration or whatever with Jesse or Tommy, and they just start falling apart. Uh, 
Tommy Sotomayor took on Polite and Sonetta at the same time. He whooped them up. He whooped them up. He won that that little debate, whatever it was that they had. He smashed them. And and you know, now Sonetta, you know, that's not his thing anyway. But I expected better from Polite because Polite, you know, he's supposed to be Mr. Smart Guy. He wrote 300 books or whatever. He didn't have no comebacks for Tommy. Tommy was tearing both of them up at the same time. These people have valid uh, inquiry and, and Umar fell apart and Vicki Dilla fall, fell apart on Jesse Lee Peterson's show. And it, it really makes them look bad. Matter of fact, Umar fell apart on, uh, what's that show? The Breakfast Club. No, no, it wasn't The Breakfast Club. It was uh, the Roland Martin Fox. show. Oh, the Roland, Roland Martin. Martin. Yeah. Now, see, that's when you with Roland Martin, you need to be as professional and keep your cool as much as possible. Now, you know, going on Roland Martin, you going into hostile territory. You know, those people ain't into that black Pan-African stuff. You know it from the very that's hostile territory. If you ain't ready to handle the type of stuff they're going to bring you, you need to stay away from them. But, you know, people like him, they want the spotlight or whatever. And I'm going to tell you, that's what I really love about Minister Farrakhan. Mr. Farrakhan is excellent when he goes on these different shows. I don't care if it's black. I don't care if you're white. Mr. Farrakhan know how to go in there and keep a smile on his face, do his thizzy, and leave and cuss your ass out off the camera. <laughs> Mr. Farrakhan is wonderful. I mean, you probably seen like when he handles uh, Phil Donahue or some of these people on Fox. Mr. Farrakhan is excellent. The only person I seen that Minister Farrakhan couldn't really handle was Elijah Muhammad's son, Wardine. That's the only person that I seen he had a problem with, and he stayed quiet most of the time because Wait, they debated. I, I never heard that before. It wasn't. It really wasn't a debate because Farrakhan's information is 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 a uh, hearsay, and it comes from another party. Wardine Muhammad lived the history. He. He met, he know what uh, Master Farad Muhammad looked. He was there as a child. Master Farad, he was named after Master Farad Muhammad. So how can Minister Farrakhan tell uh, Wardeen Muhammad, the son of Elijah Muhammad, anything about that Nation of Islam stuff? When he was there, he lived it. He met, he know what Master Farad Muhammad looked like. He know all that stuff. Only thing Minister Farrakhan could do is sit there and basically listen because he can't, he can't deal with that man. And matter of fact, even when it comes to Islam itself, uh, War D. Muhammad is more knowledgeable about the religion of Islam than Mr. Farrakhan is. He was the only person that I saw that Mr. Farrakhan basically didn't have nothing to say. He can't deal, he couldn't deal with War Muhammad. He couldn't do, do and wow. he <coughs> Mr. Farrakhan accused him of tearing down the nation of Islam, but at the same time, he praised him. He praised Wardi Muhammad. Now, how can you want to be a friend? Now, they, 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 they hate Malcolm X, but Malcolm didn't destroy the nation of Islam. Malcolm X didn't take the, uh, the nation down, but he claimed that Wardi Muhammad did it, and he kissing Wardi Muhammad's ass. I'm your brother. I'm your brother. Yeah, but how can you hate Malcolm and wanted Malcolm dead and Wardeen Muhammad did way worse than Malcolm ever ever did? Well, that's the accusation that's the claim. The was that reality Elijah was, Muhammad's son? That, that was Elijah yeah. Muhammad's son? Yeah, Wardeen oh, is that Muhammad. The one, yeah. Is that the one who told um uh, Malcolm X about what Elijah yeah. Muhammad was doing? Yeah, the one. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 See, he, he's at the root of everything. <laughs> Because Malcolm said he had heard the rumors of Elijah Muhammad's infidelity. He said he heard the rumors. But when the son came to him and verified it, that's what made Malcolm become interested in what was going on. Because he had all, the, the rumors of this had always been going around forever. He had heard the rumors. But when the son said, yeah, my daddy do got all these women, blah, blah, blah. That would verify the whole thing. 
And that what kicked it all off. You know, Ward, Ward D was the was behind all this stuff, kicking everything off. Wow. But he and get I, prayed. Malcolm get shot, but Ward D Muhammad get prayed. <laughs> why didn't Ward D Muhammad, why didn't he go out there and expose? How come uh, Malcolm X was used as a tool, as a yeah, vessel well, to go and got killed behind it? Yeah, he got he got he got used. Yeah, yeah he got used. He got used because, like you said, how come the son didn't didn't do that? Mm -hmm. Well, he knew you know, better. Malcolm, yeah, Malcolm got caught up in that stuff, and you know, Malcolm got caught up in that stuff because you know he really believed in Elijah Muhammad, and he really believed in that. He was a sincere brother, and he couldn't believe. You know, he got caught up in that. I mean, how would you feel? You gave 12 years of your life and you you telling people how right, holy and righteous this man is. And then you find out that he been messing with. Uh, uh, and and I really don't know how true it is, but they they are saying that some of these uh, children, uh, young women was underage. They was uh, uh, 18, 17, 18, maybe as, as low as 15 years old that he messed with. And I'll tell wow. you this, during the 70s, 60s, you know, back in the day, nobody really tripped off of that anyway. Because I know when I was growing up, I grew up in the late 60s. When I was growing up and I got into high school and whatever, a lot of my uh, uh, classmates, them young girls was messing with old, you know, uh, boys that was in high school, boys that was in college or grown ass men used to used to come and pick them up after school. And them girls used to love being with those older guys because these older guys had jobs, they had cars, you know, uh, you know, it was, it was, a, you know, it, it was something to flaunt, you know, I'm young girls, you know, my, my man picking me up, you know, you got to get on the yellow school bus and she got some grown man coming to pick her up, you know, after school. Wow. And nobody man. tripped off of it. Nobody tripped off of it. My, my uncle, I just found out my uncle was messing around with a 15 year old uh, young girl. She was a yeah, runaway. She was a yeah, runaway, and, and my uncle took care of, was taking care of her. But the age limit was different back in those days, though, too. I those don't know days. what the age limit. Only thing it, I know it was different, though. It wasn't what it is now. I, I know. Well, that I think that nobody was tripping off of it back in the day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You they know. they just didn't trip off of it because these was children. These was grown men coming to the high school after young girls and the young girls and their parents just said nothing. Nobody said nothing. You know, wow, you got an older guy that like you, you know, matter of fact, you know, I hope this young guy gets you out of my damn house, you know, go ahead on. Yeah, I definitely hear you there, but yeah, um, I don't want to do too much on that, but um, okay. Another question and see, you know, I, I'm not going to turn, I don't want this to be uh, beef at all, but I mean, there have been those who have came, on various platforms of mine, and mm -hmm. they demonized Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. um, there was a couple of different um, speakers, and I'm not going to say any names because this is yeah. not about this is not about um, taking shots personally at people and their beliefs. Like if you believe in um, you know this man, you believe in this religion, okay, then so be it. But you know we're just going to attack the information. But as far as you know, those who have came and defended. Elijah um, and um, uh, what's his name? Farrakhan's mm -hmm. actions, you know, that led to the um, to the murder of Brother Malcolm. I mean, you know, there was one sister who came and said that she got paperwork. She got receipts mm -hmm. that she could come present on my platform. Mm -hmm. And there was another brother. There was another brother a long time ago. That um actually came on my came on my platform and made um a claim that um uh, Malcolm X firebombed his own house. <laughs> they, okay. There was Molotov cocktails found up in his um place, and you know he um you know threw Molotov cocktails through his own um uh, baby daughter's uh, nursery room and all that. Mm -hmm. Then there was another sister who claimed that. You know, um, she has all the receipts, all the paperwork and whatever, you know, that Farrakhan and Elijah are innocent. Right. What would be your 
thoughts on statements made like that? <laughs> well, my thing is, anything is possible. Anything is possible. But at the same time, common sense tells me from what happened, Malcolm X, to pull off this, this, this scenario, he's a low-down, dirty dog just to just to try to pull off this scenario, he's willing to risk his own life and the life of his children. And to me, I from from the from what I get from Malcolm, he loved his wife and he loved his children. Why would he risk his life and their life just so he can try to make the nation of Islam look bad? I mean, that don't even make any sense to me. Common sense tells me, you know, and then it's mighty funny. And, and also. Uh, to my knowledge, um, there's a vi the video somewhere out there, but somebody was telling me about Captain Joseph. They said that Cap Captain Joseph said in a deathbed confession that he was there when the Muslims firebombed Malcolm's house. He was there. Also, uh, there was at least two or three attempts on Malcolm's life even before he got to the firebomb. They was trying to kill him. So, I know they put a bomb underneath his car. Right. I mean, they, yeah, they, they definitely put a bomb on his car. Um, and his wife and, you know, uh, the children and all that, you know, could have. This is why, man, it's just so despicable. This is why I don't, I cannot follow um, these Negro religions, man, these Negro yeah. cults, because. Yeah. If they would do something like that, you claim to be for your people, but all the stories that I'm getting is that the only thing you ever um, hurt or harmed was your own people. You yes. ain't never did nothing to those who you claim are the devil. Nope. Nothing physically was ever done. No violence, no harm was ever done to these people that you claim are the devil in your doctrine. But the only thing that the stories that's coming to me is that you're responsible for the murder of, of Malcolm. You, you threw a firebomb into his nursery, could have killed all you know, those little black babies. Yeah. Um, you're responsible for poisoning Dr. Khaled Muhammad. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. Th that's, that's just what's Maybe it's propaganda. That's what um you got a lot of um people from you know the uh, religion and the temples and stuff. They say that's just negative propaganda put out here against the minister. Well, let me let me let me ask some more negative propaganda. Personally, this is what I experienced personally. I was at the mosque. The only thing I want is to buy a bean pie and a newspaper and listen to the meeting. Nigger gonna pull me to the side to about. Where you been, you know, or whatever. What you mean, where I been? I'm not in, I'm not in the nation of Islam no more. Nigga going to tell me, start talking some crazy stuff to me. Look, I just come here to listen to the meeting, buy a newspaper, whatever, and, and leave. And then this nigga are going to notice that I'm wearing my FOI lapel pin. You don't even, you don't deserve to wear that, 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 that pin. You, you're not in the nation. Uh, we need to take that from you. I said, okay, okay, see, so now you don't cross the, 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 the line, Negro. You make any attempt to take my lapel pen that I bought, because Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam don't give you nothing. Everything you get, you have to do it yourself. I bought this lapel pen. If they gave it to me, I'd be happy to give it back to you. No big deal. But this Negro threatened to take my lapel pen. I said, it's going to be a serious problem. A big fight is getting ready to break out. I'm already thinking about how I'm going to take this Negro out because you ain't taking my lapel pin right here in the mosque. And the sad thing about it, Craig, was I brought guests that day. I didn't come by myself. I brought, matter of fact, I brought Anthony Martin Ross, that Negro that stole from me that day. I brought him and some other people as guests to the mosque that day. And they, that Negro threatened to take my we're getting ready to throw down. Now, I don't, you know, that Negro stole from me, whatever. 
but I will give him his credit where credit is due. He's not going to let me fight by myself. He would have jumped in that fight with me if, if we had to throw down in the temple. He would have been there with me. And my guess, we, we're going to be some fight Negroes up in here. Okay. So years later, I decided to go back again. I think this is 2010. Same thing happened. This Negro talking about, Brother Craig, I almost had to run the FOI over. This Negro going to tell me, uh, you've been disrespecting the minister. I said, how? You know how? I said, no, I do not know how. You made the video. I said, I make a lot of videos. Tell me how I disrespect the minister. Here you are making an accusation. I dis disrespect the minister, but he can't tell me how I did it. I said, nigga, you need to go sit your happy ass down. And That's goes, a nigga that was following you. That was a nigga that been watching your videos, man. Yeah. Like, subscribe to you, never probably said nothing, but they, they keep watch over you, man, when you speak yeah. against the NOI. Yeah. But yes, sir. But continue, yeah. sir. Yeah, so they're going to follow me outside, and he's going to tell the FOI to surround my car. And I told them, and I could tell the brothers, they really didn't want to they didn't really want to bother me because they, you know, they was looking at each other like, you know, because I was telling my story as this was going down. I was telling my story. I said, I'm a former FOI. I said, I, I helped build all this, man. The reason why Farrakhan is where he's at. I was I was there in the 80s. I'm the one to help build all this. And the brothers respected me as a as a, a veteran soldier. But they was listening to their captain. And he surround his car. And so I started my car up and I felt as though they might be a threat. And I got my foot on the accelerator, some FOI getting ready to get past run over because I'd be damned if I'm going to let them get into my car and try to hurt me. Well, I never heard you, man. I had never heard you tell that story. Wow. Yeah. It's just some hateful Negro. I mean, yeah. Man, he thought he was, I mean, man, oh man. That's why I agree yeah. with you. Say I'm not trying to trade a white slave master for a Negro slave master. Right? No, sir. No, ma'am. No way. No how. Man, tell us some more. Man, man. Wow, that that's disturbing. But that needs yeah. to be told. There was I a time I, when I wanted to join the the NOI. Oh my God, <laughs> I would have made the worst mistake of my life. Yeah, based, you might mess around. Got hurt. My yeah. mess around got hurt by by them. Some one of them crazy ass Negro. Yes, sir. But I never had no real problem with them like that because I made it very clear. I said, if you if you make a move on me, you might as well go ahead and, and kill me because I'm just like the Terminator. I'd really be back. I'm not going to let you hurt me and think you're going to get away with it. I said, I burn this damn temple down. I will put a hurting on you by myself. I'm not going to go and recruit nobody. I will come back by myself with my gasoline, with my kerosene. And I'll burn this damn temple down. Now, I suggest to you, go on about your business. This is my last visit with you, Negro. I'm gone. I ain't been to the temple since. And uh, I did report. I did report them to Chicago. Chicago did not respond. But but temple number seven found out about it. And somebody, one of the ministers or whoever uh, that represented temple number seven sent me an apology letter. And they apologized for that behavior. And they said they was going to talk to Chicago and blah, blah, blah. But I haven't heard nothing from Chicago at all. But I did report their behavior to Chicago. And also heard another story. And um, <clears throat> I'm not, well, I, I don't think you were still up in the nation at this time because you had told me um, Dr. Kyle, his, his um, original name was what, Harold X. Yeah, Harold I X. Believe, yeah, I forgot what yes, the last yes, name was. Yeah, Harold X. Yes, sir. Um, Harold X. But um, um, you ever heard of this Negro um named James Bess? Supposedly yeah. he's the one that he, that opened yeah. fire and tried yeah. to um assassinate um Khalid while he was with his son. Yeah. Um, that's when Khalid had got shot. I'm not yeah. sure how many times Khalid had got Doctor Khalid Abdul Muhammad um get got shot, but um, yeah, and um. I mean, do you know anything about that story? Because when I heard, I was listening to Malik Zulu Shabazz. Mm -hmm. And remember, he wrote a, a book called The Life of uh, Khalid or something. Yeah. So he, he was on, I believe, Sinetta TV or he might yeah, have been he was. on. Yeah, he was. I saw that interview, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
when he was talking about um, James Best or whatever. Do you are you familiar with that story at all? James James Best got a YouTube channel. And he talks about what happened. And basically the original James Best you're talking about? Yeah, James Best, the one that shot him. He he got a YouTube channel. What? I forgot what, what this what say? the channel is. I have to look it up and I, I send you I send it uh send you the, the, the channel link. What's his uh, side somebody, of the story? Basically, from he said it was a domestic dispute. He said that uh Khaled Muhammad was messing with his ex-wife or something like that. And it was a domestic dispute. Do that's, what he, that? that's what he that's what he that's what James Best is saying. Do you personally believe that yourself? Or well, he's the one that shot him. I guess he he wouldn't know why he shot him. Man, somebody they could answer all type of murderers the rumor, is, the rumor is Khaled Muhammad was a was a was a womanizer. <laughs> what? <laughs> I ain't know that. Wow. Well, a lot of those guys, like you just said a few minutes ago, you know, these guys can't don't have no discipline, they can't control themselves. And when they offer booty, they can't say no. But wait, hold up a second, man. This is the first time I've ever heard this. So Khalid Muhammad was a womanizer. Wow. There were what the man, they, they gotta be now, I'll tell you this. Now, I gotta see, see some receipts on that. I gotta see some well, receipts. I, well, I'll tell you yeah. this. It's it's uh of course they're not gonna put that out in the public. But it's, it's, it seems to me it's normal behavior in the nation of Islam. A lot of these sisters get passed around. They go from husband, like a Leah Porkchop Muhammad. You know, she go from one husband to the next husband to the next husband. And, you know, they, 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 it's, it's a circle of people getting passed around, these women in the nation of Islam. You know, Mr. Farrakhan got children by one of his close uh, uh, associates. One, of, uh, I think, brother, what's his name? Rockman or whatever it was, he got children by his daughter, one of his his daughters. Wait a second. I heard, okay. I heard that ahead. Mr. Farrakhan got about 22, 22 children. I'm trying to get clarification. All right. Because when you say womanizer, okay, let, let's get into that real quick. Because okay. I'm trying to figure out when you say womanizer, are you talking about like he was abusive? Like he's hit? No, he's just, like, just okay. he's sleeping around with whoever they oh, get just their sleeping hand around. With. Yeah. Oh, was he married at the to, time? To my I'm knowledge, just... he, to my knowledge, he was married. That don't stop nobody. <laughs> yeah, I'm married. Well, no, I'm so just trying. To, yeah, no, no, I understand that. I'm just trying yeah. to like get clarification because, um, I mean, just a brother that loves women. I mean, see what I don't understand, like, man. See, I know how brothers, you know, love sisters, but. As far as like, I mean, being no, that no, high up love. in the nation of it, it, it's not okay. about love. It's about lust. lust. It's lust. Yeah, lust. Yeah, yeah, lust. But being that high it's up, man, you, you, you love the sister. You you have enough discipline to do what is in the best interest of that sister, and 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 the organization and the people that you, you know, because sooner or later, uh, whatever is in the dark is gonna come into the light. And if you, especially if you get these women pregnant, sooner or later, people are gonna find out that you got babies by these women, and a lot of people. A lot of these women is not gonna keep their mouth shut about about it. You know, they're gonna tell. You know, I got children by so and so. Yeah, I mean, man, he couldn't. I mean, as far as like being as what as popular of a name that he has, I mean, you mean to tell me he couldn't get a sister that he could be con content with? I mean, he has to sleep around. He can't marry a sister that he could be content with, like that right there, Mister Farrakhan. Been married to to, to sister uh, uh, Khadija, what what sixty years, for a long long time. That they didn't stop his dingling from going outside of the marriage. He got nine children by sister Khadija. Remember, the rumor is Farrakhan has twenty two children. Wow. They didn't come from sister Khadija. Only nine came from sister Khadija, and they they basically grown. I, and then some of the Farrakhan's uh, children, I think they still, some of them are still children. You know, they're still teenagers or whatever. So he's living like some type of king, some type of pharaoh. I, I sort of wonder, I sort of believe that because 
Mr. Farrakhan was talking about infidelity and he was talking about how the sisters, you know, they take a lot from us men and we mess up and they still stay with us. And I, I remember this one speech and he was talking like that and she was looking at him really, really hard. You know, I I was in the nation and I've been around Mr. Farrakhan a little bit. I, you know, I'm not no expert about Mr. Farrakhan. I never had that kind of relationship. I've been around him a whole lot because I travel with him a lot. I've been around him a little bit. And, but, and I've been around Sister Khadija. But I never seen her look at him the way she did this one particular, I forgot what, what speech it was. Oh, she was looking at him like, if I could take a knife and slice your throat and get away with it. She really was looking at him really, really hard. Now that I hear all these allegations about his children, there's a rumor that he took our money that we raised and he helped uh, that sister. You ever heard that sister, that singer, Melba Moore? Yeah, I heard. I heard that. he took the, he took some of that money that we, that we raised. He helped her pay her bill because, you know, she was in debt. And they said she got children by Mr. Farrakhan. And they said Mr. Farrakhan got Mexican children, have Mexican children. He got, you know, he got messed around with some, some, because you know he got a house in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, or whatever, and you got a lot of Mexican people, or whatever. Right? He got a, he got children by a Mexican woman. Wow. Some of his children are half Mexicans. Yeah. So yeah, man. I mean, I guess moving on, man. We've been on on here for like, man, two and over two and a half hours. But yeah, yeah so, just, I mean, there's a lot of things that that that, yeah, that we can talk about. Or whatever, but when it's all said and done, my thing is, okay, what are we gonna do about it? What are we gonna do about it? how are we gonna change all this? How are we gonna see? I understand people get weak or whatever, but see, we're in a situation where leadership, you have to be, you have to be about it, about it. You got to be real about yours. If you can't control your ding a ling, you don't need to be in leadership position like that because the people themselves, we need to see somebody that got discipline we need to see a strong image you know stop all with all that fake stuff whatever like me myself brother craig i can count the women i've been with on my hand it ain't that big a deal to me never have been i have lots of discipline matter of fact matter of fact i've done you know because i, I just that's just me i'm not no you know the, the, the sex thing i got I wish I was a virgin right now to tell the truth. It ain't that serious to me. My thing, my pleasure, and I get excited over liberation and freedom. I love, I get my high off beating up the person in power. Like when I was little, when I was little, I found joy fighting people bigger than me because to fight somebody, my size or smaller, that wasn't a thrill to me, I, you know, whatever. But if I could beat up somebody bigger than me, that was a thrill because this person is bigger, stronger. I always root for the underdog because I always been the underdog. Oh, you little skinny nigga thing. You know, sit your happy ass down. Then I whooped your ass. Then, you know, that's thrilling to me. I love that. So we as a people are the underdog. My thrill and my excitement is to beat this guy at his own game, bring him down. I love it. I love the thought of it. And I know we can do it. I know we can do it. But we can't do it physically because we just don't we just don't have it like that. We, just, we can't do it. We can't do it physically. But I do know politically, I know economically, we can whoop the hell out of these people and they'll leave us the hell alone. I know we can do it. But I, I can't determine that because I can't control people's minds. I can't tell nobody what to and do. Re-education, man. We've been indoctrinated like yeah, so deeply. We've been indoctrinated so deeply. Like even if you look on the continent of Africa, man, I mean, mm -hmm. they speak. Man, you hardly even see an African country that speaks speaks its own native dialect. If we no, look over none here, of them do. Exactly. They speak French. Um you know, Portuguese, um, English, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, even over here, man, you know, we've been taught, um, you know, to honor, we've been taught to, you know, um, 
celebrate all these pagan holidays mm -hmm. to go off and you know give our money you know to buy these European cars and huh. we could be putting all that I mean we got to have the I mean just look at all the millionaires that we have in America but yeah you got to also take into account they would they would do them because they're expendable they're mm -hmm. part of the system of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. They're expendable. They will kill any of these Negroes. Like I said about Kanye West, Oprah Winfrey, Kevin Samuels, I mean Michael Jordan. They would kill like they like they killed John John F. Kennedy if they went against the system. Barack Obama was lucky to even make it through eight years without being assassinated. But if he would have did something major for um Black people, as far as like reparation, man, you know, they got white militias that would murder him, mm -hmm. would, put, would put a bullet up in him. So the white man, like you say, man, we are still in bondage. We're just backyard Negroes. <laughs> and even on the continent, the continent of Africa is just a backyard. That's, that's the all. Man. Yeah. A backyard to the white man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, man. Uh, for some reason, man, um, black people just globally have allowed this white man to just become so dominant. Yeah, he's so militarily um powerful to the point to where it's like at this point, how could black people fight back? Um, well, physically they can't, like you say. We got to do it mentally, psychologically, yeah. and politically. Yeah. Mentally, psychologically, and politically, man. Right? You know, we got to even start looking at ourselves as a people. That that's one of the hardest things, man. With all this, you know, this tribalism. And you know, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. I'm a Moor. I'm a five percenter. I'm a Pan African. I'm from the NOI. I'm a Black Christian. We let all these different ideologies, man, come in between Black unity, man. At the end of the day. If we could just put all that aside, I'm an atheist, I'm this, I'm that. My um, teachings are superior than yours. What I do is superior to what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if we could just put all that to the side and just say, okay, man, we have a common oppressor, a right. common enemy. We have a common problem right. that we need to band together to address. Just based off of that premise, man. But I don't know what it's going to take to even get black people to even be able to come together and agree on anything, on any commonality. I just don't see it because we let the um the differences we highlight the differences that we have amongst right. each other more than we um put focus and magnify the commonalities that we could come together and build together. You know, so well, the, rea know. the reality is, ahead, <clears throat> the reality is, we are a diverse people. We're very diverse in in all kinds of things. We're we're diverse, and all even though we all live in America, our experience is is different, and how we see things. You know, back in the day, I used to call people like um, Jesse Lee Peterson or Candace Owens. You know, I used to talk all that stuff too. I guess that's why a lot of people was tripping on me uh, because I used to talk that way too. You know, I used to call people coons and sambos too back in the day. But I, I've grown to understand that our, everybody's experience is different. So I can't, you know, how I came up, I can't expect you to be like me because our experience in life is different. You know, you didn't come up the way that I did. Matter of fact, the people that came up the way I did exactly the same kind of way, we still look at things differently. Like my brothers and sisters, we always raised in the same place, same mama, daddy, blah, 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 same grandparents. Everybody look at life different. So we have to come up with something that can implement all our differences, all the diversity in black America, because believe me, Candace Owens and Jesse Lee Peterson, Tommy, some all of them understand. They know that 
we live under race. They know that the system is not. They all know. They, they all know these things. But am I going to let go of my comfort zone messing around with you? I live good. You know, Jesse doing good, doing whatever he doing. You know, Tommy's doing. Candace, they all doing good. And here you talking all this crazy stuff, make me lose my job, lose my, be- my means of dollar. I ain't doing that. You have to take this in consideration that if these people jump on the bandwagon, if they jump on the bandwagon with all this rhetoric, is it worth losing everything that they see? A lot of us not serious about nothing. Why should Oprah Winfrey, why should Gail King, why should Will Smith, why should all our people that got all these resources and money, why should they support you? And we're not serious. Now, it's my belief. It's my belief. If we show our people that's on the top, that the bottom is serious about getting off the bottom, I think they would help us. They don't have to come out and give us a check. You just go to the mailbox one day. Where does big check come from? Oprah don't have to say nothing. Will Smith don't have to say nothing. Matter of fact, during the Million Man March, Will Smith was there. MC Hammer was there. A lot of our celebrities was there. Michael Jackson it was a conflict of schedule. He was gonna. He was scheduled to be there at the Million Man March. So the people, all our people, are really ready to take care of business and do something. Farrakhan didn't have nothing to offer in 1995 except a, you know, pretty speech, and it was a corny speech, really talking about the history of the dollar bill. He didn't offer the brothers nothing. You know, all these people went to the Million Man March. And it was a bunch of people with their egos trying to get some attention. But nobody brought no kind of plan, no vision, no solution to nothing. Can you imagine if they had the Mississippi campaign in 1995 and Farrakhan told all these brothers, we're going to take control of Mississippi. It would have been a done deal. We would have Mississippi right now. And we would be in control of it. But the problem here, again, is Actually, getting the state of Mississippi would really be easy. It's controlling the state, taking it from a poverty-stricken state to a wealthy state and to maintain that state. That's going to be the problem because you're going to have a lot of uh, folks who don't want to see you successful, including a lot of black people. That's why you have to have your act together, stay focused, like they said back in the day, Keep your eyes on the prize. Get Stop thinking about panties. You working with a sister, you like, damn, that sister, she's so beautiful, whatever. Get your mind off her ass. Get your mind off her booty. Keep your eyes on the prize. We got to get this state together. That's what's wrong with us. We, we're distracted from stuff. You know, booty, liquor, my Jesus. It ain't about your Jesus. That's your personal thing. It's about what is in the best interest of a people. You got to keep your mind on the prize. The reason why I'm talking to you right right now, Brother Craig, is because I kept my eyes on the prize. I'm getting out of here. They try to distract me. They want me to watch a lot of TV. You know, they purposely were sending women to my room, you know, trying to get me distracted because I was in my room working on those legal papers night and day. Suing the hell out of them, giving them problems. They was trying to keep my, they was trying to distract my mind. I refuse to get distracted because I can get booty. I once I get out of here, I can get all the booty I want. I need to get out of here, yes, sir. But I need to get out of here. I want to make sure that you cover this before we go for today's yeah. um program. Um, <clears throat> okay, granted, I do believe. And what you're saying, because no, I know it's a, a fact of the celebrities that you said that were um, either at the Million Man March or scheduled. But the question becomes, um, what about mm-hmm. all this materialism? OK, you yeah. got to like I, Negroes that spend a hundred thousand dollars on a doggone chain huh. got to have a car well beyond. I mean. OK, it's not to say that, OK, you're making that type of money. You earned it. You shouldn't have something that looks nice, but got to have 15 
<laughs> high end vehicles like Floyd Mayweather. Got to mm -hmm. have. I mean, what I'm saying is you can have a nice house without spending 20, 30, 40, 50 million on it. What is this materialism? I mean, this even goes on. I'm not just blaming the African American, also on the continent. Yeah. How you got these um rich um these corrupt um African leaders and dictators um you know um, living like um kings worth um you know millions and billions of dollars while the whole community is starving. Just like right. in my own community, we have churches that look like um something from Mount Olympus huh. right next door to the ghetto. I mean the the house right across the street is ghetto. Everybody on there is all government assistance, but you got mm -hmm. this multi-million dollar um, church, a.k.a. mansion, right yeah. up in the heart of the um, community. So what I'm trying to figure out, granted, you know, I do believe that a lot of our people will reach out and do more. Yeah. But my thing is, my, my question is, all oh, this materialism, like, do you have to spend that much? You don't have to come into the black supremacy cause or pan african You don't have to, but you could just, you know, build more schools, you know, just give out more donations. I mean, why do you, why do we um, constantly compete with each other to show that we have the most shiny, the more shinier rims or <laughs> you're trying right. your suit in the next Negro, man. That that don't mm -hmm. make sense. Yeah, bro. So if you could speak on that before we close up, I man, I gotta grab me man, some lunch in a second, but man, if you could just speak on that, please. I mean, then I'm it's just like what, it's just like it's just like what you said. It's a it's a we love that feeling of being better than somebody else. And some of them, you know, and some of us are just naturally materialistic. We're greedy. Those things give us value. See, I don't trip. I've never tripped off of that. The only thing of, of value that I've ever really wanted in my life, I wanted a go a real gold watch. I'm talking about a real gold watch. I'm not talking about no gold plated watch type of stuff, whatever. The only thing I ever really wanted was a real gold watch. I would go into the jewelry store and uh, I want a real gold watch. But you know something? I've never I never got that real gold watch because by the time. I could afford it and really wanted, you know, really wanted, was ready to get the watch. Technology had got to the point where you can see the time on your telephone. So I'm like, what's, this, you know, what's the sense of getting this watch now? And I can see the time on my telephone. It just wasn't exciting for me no more because when I really wanted the watch, I'm wearing the watch, not only because it's pretty, because I want to keep, keep the time. But now, you know, we got these cell phones. I keep it with the time on these cell phones. And it's just not exciting to me no more. I just really, you know, I wanted to watch. But a lot of us, material things give us value. You know, my car, my house, it, it gives me value. Give, you know, uh, it, 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 makes, it makes my religion valid because I can say, even though Jesus didn't have nothing to do, with you making your money, look, look how Jesus blessed me. No, you bless yourself. You got the education, you did the work, and you got these material things. Jesus didn't do a damn thing for you. If you notice, they don't bring up Muhammad, they don't bring up Allah or Jesus when they when you're poor and suffering. They never say, well, maybe God is punishing me. That's why I'm poor and suffering. You know, they don't never bring that up. But when they successful, because of what they done, not because they got any help from some invisible God. <laughs> look how I've been blessed by Jesus. How, you know, look how I've been blessed. No, you did that yourself, all of it. But a lot of people, and I got relatives like that. Material things give them value. And see, for me, and what they say, you cannot... Uh, you cannot grow beyond your people. I forgot exactly how that statement goes. But if your people is viewed as a nigga, that's what you are. I don't care how much money you got, who you think you are in life. And these, these peck of woods will bring you down the side sooner or later. They will tell you, you know, Oprah Winfrey is a nigga. I remember because I've always been a fan of Oprah Winfrey. I, I love Oprah Winfrey. I always thought she was a pretty woman. 
Uh, she's a very intelligent woman. I always like Oprah Winfrey. Can I please say something real quick, bro? I, wanna, I just got to get yeah. this out here. You made me think of something. I got to get this on recorded. Um, <laughs> there are some, even such as myself, who believe that God is between the black woman's legs. I, I, I don't want to sound, but let me get it out. I have to say this because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm spiritual. I, I say wild stuff that that there's some that believe that God is between the black woman's legs and the black woman's womb yeah. is the creator. Is the creator. And because it created us. This is where we come from. Like, mm -hmm. you don't believe in a sky daddy. A no. lot of our brothers and sisters, they don't believe in a sky, a, 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 a pagan, um, you know, blonde haired blue eyed um, white man. Mm -hmm. It's being no Jesus Christ. So the only thing that they could even say is a creator. The closest thing that most of our people know of being a creator uh, comes is in between of the um, black women's legs. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I hate to say it like that, but I just want to put that out there because I'm going to use that in a further speech. I, I didn't want to forget that. I'm going to definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that sounds like what spookism to you it sounds like just. Like crazy. I mean, yeah. the, the creator is lies between the. No, no, no. I will. No, I'll say this: the creator lies between the black woman's legs. And I don't. I, I don't want to sound nasty, but mm -hmm. yo, know, I, I could. I could prove it mm -hmm. if I had to in the future debate. Long as I, you know, have time to do my research and get my stuff um, together. But no, I'm not gonna. Don't, don't even respond to that. But just continue. Um, what you're saying about the materialism type stuff oh well I, I mean i basically said what it needs to be said it's, it's you know it's we want to be like white folks because that's how they live you know when you hear these people talk about success and and all like that stuff they want to live like the white folks just like when they go to africa they want to find a place in africa that's basically europe europe in africa because those people those people are are, are europe dark europeans they you know they, they conquered you know, they have this fictional, delusional fantasy of Africa. Africa was conquered by the Europeans. You just said it yourself a few minutes ago. They don't, their national language is not even none of their traditional languages. They speak French, Portuguese, and so-and-so, and pretty soon Chinese. That not, that's not the Africa that you, they have a delusional fantasy Africa, the Africa that you're thinking about don't exist no more. It's over. It's been over with a long time ago. Don't you know that some of these African countries just got their freedom or liberated from the from the crackers late 1950s? They just got back into control. I heard the rumor was, I heard that some of them are even asking the white men to come back and take control because they can't get it together. They, they, they messed up. They, it's really messed up. Those leaders, those African leaders are corrupt as hell because they want to they want to live this dream life that they see the Pecker would live. You know, they want that big houses and it's, it's at the expense of the people. The people there are suffering and Africa has the resources. Africa has the has everything. Except really the know how. But the leadership is not don't want to give a damn. They selling all the resources and giving all the stuff to foreigners. They don't give a damn. And the people become Africa is nothing but a big ass slave plantation because they have the resources. And then these foreigners come and their leadership sell them out and really put these put put the people themselves on a, on a slave plantation and they barely get paid. They go into the dirt, dig all these resources up and they, they are the manual labor to keep making these people rich. The same thing that was happening with slavery. Cause as you know, or anybody in business know your greatest cost is labor and they getting these people's labor for little or nothing. And they getting all these resources, making trillions, trillions, not billions, trillions of dollars. And you got the Chinese over there. You got anybody that got any kind of money, is running to Africa because they have the resources to build these computers and, and 
they got the resources over there to build to, to keep this technology going. But my main question, and we're gonna get out of here. My main question also is when I listen to these uh Pan Africans and blackity black people, they looking at Africa. It's not like they really love Africa. One of the first things they talk about is the resources, the resources. The only thing on their mind, they're not really talking about the love of the people and how you can help the people. Their mind is the same as the oppressor. Africa, uh, the resources. And this is the problem. Our main problem is these fossil fuels are killing us. These things that we make out of oil, these petrol uh, products, they're poisonous to us. These cars, these airplanes, these buses, these trucks, all this stuff running constantly 24 hours a day is killing us. We've never had a time where people have been so full of cancer. You know, this is where all this is coming from. We breathing in petrochemicals every day. Hell, we ride in it. We ride in petrochemicals every day. And our food that we eat, a lot of the fertilizer they're using for these plants is petrol based fertilizers. So the only thing you want to do is go to Africa and keep raping Africa, keep raping the planet. The same thing as the Europeans. Our main problem is we have to have a certain amount of vegetation, wildlife, plant life in order to live on this planet. The plant life is like the natural filter of the earth. Once the filter is destroyed, you're going to die because you need these plants. You need these natural habitats in order to help recycle and help filter the air on this planet. It's slowly disappearing because of the activity, 24 hour activities of men. If it, if men was doing things in moderation, the planet could, could handle it, but it's not in moderation. This is 24 hours a day. Something's got to give. Now, nothing is going to happen with the earth. The earth can handle whatever you do. The earth can handle it. The problem is, I don't give a damn what your race is. Human beings are on their way to extinction because you need the air. You need clean water. You need these things in order to survive. And once that gets to the point where it cannot be cleansed, where the recycling is over, we're done. And so it ain't going to make no difference. You, All you suckers going to be dead. The white races is going to be dead. The Pan-African is going to be dead. All of you are going to be dead, you know, because you need air, you need water, you need clean, you need clean things in order to survive and live. But that's it. And these people have the same mindset as the oppressors. It's all about material things. What can that do for you when you're dead? All the money you accumulate, all the cars, all the houses. What do that mean when you're dead? Michael Jackson, greatest entertainer in the world, worth millions and billions of dollars. He died in 2009. How much of all that material thing, all his Grammy Awards and all the money that he made, and what do that mean to him when they put him in a box? See, yeah. we put we we put material things, dead things over life. Look what they do for dead things. Gold is dead. These people are willing to go to war and kill over gold, but they wouldn't do that to save your life, brother Craig. You you and me a lot. They wouldn't go to war to save our life. They won't go to war to save lives, but they will go to war for oil and gas and rubber and gold and silver but they don't give a damn about human life or life period. They kill, they kill all the ducks. They kill all the geese. They kill all the frogs. They don't give a damn. But what's all this stuff in the end? What do it all mean when you're dead? You can't take none of this with you. But you know what they you. say. 
but you know what they yeah, it's a part of human nature, but you know what mm -hmm. they say that this um earth, this whole solar system is gonna be consumed by the sun one day once it goes into supernova and it, it, it's gonna explode. Oh that's well, what science is what? saying. Guess We're what? all see, this whole yeah, go ahead. But see, by that time, by that time, maybe the human beings, if we work together, we can find another place to go. But one particular species, the white man is not going to be able to pull it off by himself. This is, this is something that takes brains power. B-R-A-I-N-S, plural. Brain, the, the brain power of the human family in order to pull this off. That's why when you look at Star Trek, when you look at Star Wars and all these other uh, uh, science fiction, futuristic type shows, they're not tripping off religion. They're not tripping off race. They're not tripping off those things. That's, That's the why. future. That's the future yeah. of, man, of, of humanity. That's why they're not I'm tripping off those in, things. But see, that's why I'm so deep off into ancient history. I'm not uh -huh. talking about what happened in Connect. I mean, I mean, ancient history, the, the, the birthplace of um, human civilization, because I believe that the answers lie there of what's going to happen. The death of human civilization, of human mankind. I believe that the mm -hmm. answers lie in the beginning. I'm talking about the beginning of time. Yo, that, that right there, man, is just too much for the um, human brain to be able to comprehend. The human brain can't even comprehend a million years. Mm -hmm. Can't comprehend a hundred thousand years. Can't comprehend a thousand years. We're just not built like that as a species. Mm -hmm. We're not. So that's why, I mean, because I know that we, there has to be a beginning, an uh, alpha and an omega, a beginning yeah. and, the, and the end. Well, we all have an end coming. Everything mm -hmm. has an end. I mean, every tree, every critter, even they say that the um, the moon, the earth, and the sun have an end. Everything has yeah. a, a beginning and an end. Mm -hmm. So that's why I can't predict, and I have no idea what's going to happen in the end, but as far as the beginning, I can't try to reach back. That's why I'm, I'm into not science fiction, but just you know, in um, mankind, we've done everything that we can with, with the tools at our disposal to try to say what happened in the beginning. You know, they got these big bang theories and, you yeah. know, these um, theories of evolution, you know, and all those type of things. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so mankind, man, we've always been fascinated with, you know, the beginning. Yeah. Um, man, I mean, it's just this is a crazy world. It's a hostile planet that we're on, and sometimes I don't even know how the hell I arrived here. <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> What's my purpose? What's my purpose here on on this ground, on this soil? I mean, I just looked around. Sometimes I just look around, and everything just looks foreign to me. Yeah, like everything's these trees look foreign. Like every, you know, um. Man, that's why, man, I don't know. That's why a lot of mankind has resorted to religion. Yeah. To try to explain away the unknown. Right, absolutely. And it's just crazy, bro, man. I, I definitely, man, gotta man, um try to fix some lunch or whatever, man. It's been a good discussion, man. Let me go yes, ahead sir. and allow you to close out, bro. Just go ahead and close out and then we're gonna be done, bro. For for today. Right now. Well, we're done. Mm -hmm. Thank you everybody yes, for sir. listening. Uh um yeah. Subscribe to Brother Craig's channel. I'm going to put uh, the link in the uh, in the description box. Subscribe to uh, Master Supremacy. What's the name of your channel? Well, that's what. Well, well, the name of this channel is Master Supremacy, and the reason. Well, okay. also so called Master Brother Supremacy. Supremacy. Yeah, that's the name of the channel, actually. But okay. the link um, to my channel. I, I'll be going live on this channel more often. I just created it, but I'm also going to start back going live on my other channel that has 25 subscribers. But I got two days left, yeah. you know, before they let you know they let me out. But uh, I know that channel's not going to last long because I refuse to bite my tongue. I'll create a thousand channels if I have to. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not gonna um um censor, you know, my feelings and w- what needs to be um said. That's why I, I was asking if you could at least um download um this program and mirror it. I'm gonna download it myself just so I can have it in my personal collection and just go back and listen to it or whatever. I got right. a lot of my own videos, you know, on my computer. Um downloaded. So yes, sir. You know, we just have to put the truth out, man. The best way. Yeah, to the best of our ability. See how, yeah, to the best of our ability, man. I mean, it's That's like freezing about. cold outside. Yeah, snow all over the place. I'm, I'm starving, man. I haven't eaten today, man. I got to fix me something to eat. It's like almost mm-hmm. lunchtime, and I still haven't eaten. So, yeah, yeah. definitely do that, man. Um, yeah, so, yeah, uh, I, I so thank everybody for listening. Jot down your comments, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff, like. And uh, we hope that you enjoyed this conversation. And I know we was all over the place, no real particular topic. We were just rolling from this place to that place. But we covered a little bit. Uh, uh, we can cover particular topics, specific, definite topics, you know, in future live streams and uh, get you to join, get other people to join in the conversation. And like I say, uh, concentrate on the solution. And I say that the solution is. Um, Mississippi campaign. That's what I say. It's more, you know, stop tripping off the the title and concentrate on what the actual solution of what is being offered. And nobody is saying that it's perfect, but you can make it better. But it is a good foundation. It's a good vision. It's a good plan. And wherever, whatever we haven't covered or wherever we fail, you come in and help make it strong instead of fighting against something that really our ancestors was doing and they were they were being successful. We're just bringing it to the to the modern times. That's all that's happening. And you can make that successful and let us gain some power. I haven't heard no other alternative. I, I have I haven't heard any other solution that put us in a position that bring us power and influence and that's what we need because without power and influence all this stuff that we talk about really don't mean nothing we need to be in a position where I don't care if you come here you're going to have to obey the laws and the policies that we make and we can enforce it not only do we make the laws and policy here but we can enforce it and there's never been a time in the Negro, the once called Negro uh, history, where we've been in a position where we make the laws and policy, control the resources. And if you come here, we can enforce those laws and policy. Even the government itself going to have to back off. We've never been in that position. And that is what the Mississippi campaign is offering us, a chance to have some power. And in power, you also have the influence to start relations with your Africa if you want to do that or with any other power in the world as a state really is a country to itself. It's just part of the greater, the greater, uh, the greater, uh, what's the word I'm looking for that makes up the United States. But each state is a really is a small country in its own. Each state is capable of governing and doing its own thizzy. And that's what we want to do. Be able to put ourselves in a position to do our own thizzy and create a safe haven and a sanctuary where our people can come to and get help and feel safe in this geographical area. And with that said, thank you for listening. Thank you, Brother Craig, for having us on your platform this morning. And we will, we will, if time permits, or the universe or whatever, because time waits for no one and tomorrow is not promised to nobody. But if we're here, we're going to continue to try to inspire and motivate our people, ourselves to become better. And so that we can do this for future generations so they can step and progress further and go and take this on to a higher plan, a higher level and go to the and create the promised land that Dr. King spoke of the heaven of the Bible and the hereafter that the Quran speaks of. We can, we, we would do that and produce that in real time. 
We are Audi 5000. Thank you, Brother Craig, again. And we will, as in, our, in the uh, words of our ancestor, Don Cornelius used to always say, as in parting, I wish us, Brother Craig, wish us love, peace, and so, 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 so. we are Audi 5000. I'm out, y'all.